Hello everyone and welcome to episode 108 of the TW2020 New Japan Pro Wrestling Series here on the channel. It is the Best Super Juniors Tour and uh, we have it all set, ready to go. Uh, as far as we're going to have uh, each block, we'll have its own day. And then obviously we'll have to add one match as the undercard matchup. But uh, we uh, we got it jam-packed. We have a uh, you know pretty big uh, two blocks as far as seeing uh, as far as there's some new guys making their debuts as, par as part of the uh, best super juniors as uh, that's going to be a lot of fun to see how they do and uh, as far as uh, the show the final show it is set as well we know we're going to have the u.s title matchup between Pac and tyler black which that's going to be a hell of a matchup we're also going to have uh, potentially it really depends on uh, julia's schedule if she's going to be able to have this women's title matchup against Yutami Hayashista. If not, that will be a number one contendership women's matchup uh, between Yutami Hayashista and then Ashley Flair. And then hopefully she'll be able to go at Dominion. If not, I don't know. We'll probably end up having to... I just don't know what, what we'll do with that belt at that rate because it's technically not ours. So I feel like it'd kind of be weird to vacate it when it's technically not ours to vacate. So that's kind of weird. Um, I mean, just kind of something that's out of our wheelhouse. Because, I mean, we could do it. But I just feel like that'd be kind of wrong to do, personally. I actually, I don't even know if you can. Let me just take a look. So I'm pretty sure you... Yeah, you can. But, I again, sure, we were the ones, you know, with our belt, technically. Uh, with the IWGP, you know, as far as insignia. And it's... I guess it is our belt. So I guess we can do whatever the hell we want with it. But I just feel like it's kind of wrong to do. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Uh, but as far as, uh, from that perspective, we're also going to have a Never 1.6 Man Tag Team title matchup as the new champions, Los Ungobernables de Apollo, they're going to take on Suzuki Goon. Uh, the former Tag Team Champions, Shatoru Shino and Claudio Castiglione, will be teaming up with Takanori Ito to uh, take on the Never 1.6 Man Tag Team Champions. As for the, uh, but that's, of course, that's the finals. As for the blocks, they look like this. Block A of the 33rd Annual Best of the Juniors will be as follow. Black Taurus uh, making his return, of course. He has been a staple of these Best of the Juniors that we've booked so far. At times, he's been damn near at the top of the list. Sometimes, it's kind of hit and miss. This might be finally the year for him to win the Best of the Juniors. never know. And then our debuting, Chaz Gable. So, this one, obviously it's Chad Gable, but... As far as Chad Gable, it's a copyright name for WWE, which is very funny because I try to stay away from that, but I just now realize, I don't know why I was thinking that Cena's name is not, um, as far as uh, it's not copywritten, but it is. It, he just loans it out to the WWE as far as, like, it's like a, forget the actual deal, but he, he's described it before, where, um, basically, he gives them the rights because, obviously, he feels like, they gave him the opportunity to build that name, and uh, it's a whole thing. I don't think it, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe they would actually let him use his real name if he were to leave elsewhere. Obviously, it's a hypothetical scenario, because at this rate, he'll never leave. But that's just as far as I feel like that's kind of the thing. And we try to stay away from that, and I'm not exactly sure if just changing one letter, because that's his, you know, his real name is Charles, I, forget, I think it's Charles something Betts is his real name. So I, I wanted to go with Chaz because obviously it's very, very similar though. I think it might be too similar. I think it would end up being flagged anyways for like you know, being so similar. Kind of like a cease and desist deal. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's uh, technically because it's a it's a new name. But uh, I like the Gable name. He got that from Dan Gable. was why he used that. And I always thought that was yeah, that's just a, a great name to begin with. So, uh, But he's making his debut as a freelancer. Obviously, a uh, American guy, Jin, setting, you know, stepping foot in the best of the juniors. I think that's a great spot for him. He's going to have some great opportunities to wrestle some very, very fun talent in matches I would love to see. Uh, like him and Tobin and Arabe in real life would be pretty awesome. Him and Yehai would be awesome. Him and Ishimori would be a lot of fun. Him and Black Taurus would be a lot of fun. Uh, him and El and um, Vikingo would be a really, really fun kind of Clash of Styles type of matchup. There's like a lot of fun matches from this block that I would love to see with him. And uh, as far as that's going to be a lot of fun to see how he does in his debut with us. Uh, Demonic Bomb, of course, of the Bomb Squad. Drew Gulak, 
of the United Empire, Eriro del Airbender, of course, of Koji Kamai, Thumano Yabe, a Blastoff, Hira Kawado from the Blastoff, or Blastoff, from the Bomb Squad, rather, Fred Yehan from Suzuki Goon, SB Kento from LIJ, then Taiji Shimori, which will be his final Best Super Juniors. He has announced it. This is his last one, a former winner, a man that has uh, been to the finals before and has came up short, but he's won it here in the save. A lot of fun to be able to see him send it off. He could probably still go another year or two, but again, you know, he's 43. I feel like now is kind of the time to send him off while he's still a high-level junior compared to, like, if we wait a couple of years and when he's kind of at the bottom of the barrel and just an aging veteran. Now, at least, it can be a big deal, and if he loses to somebody, it, it helps elevate them. It's a whole thing. But also, he could end out with another Best Super Juniors win, and uh, he'd also be the first uh, multiple-time winner during this whole save. Every year, we've had a new winner, as far as first-time winner of the Best Super Juniors. That might change with somebody like Taiji Shimori. And also, you know, of course, Abe uh, won it as far as he won it two years ago. Kyle O'Reilly won it last year, who was a part of Block B. But, you know, as far as we'll run down Block B now... Bushi, L.I.J., of course, another veteran who has uh, flirted with success in the Best Super Juniors, but has never won it. Same thing for the J-Cup as well. But we don't do the J-Cup here. That'd be kind of cool to bring it back. Uh, especially, we missed out on the anniversary of that. That would have been pretty cool to do. But we, uh, I mean, we already have the Best Super Juniors. I feel like the Super J-Cup. It's great if the whole idea was, you know, at that time, the 90s, Junior Heavyweight scene was very, very fun because it was fresh and new and it had people from all over the world. We would have to do that again, kind of using everybody from all around the world to make that work. And fortunately, we just have so much talent and that it kind of be stacked with just you know, New Japan talent. But we probably could have done it and it been all right. But as far as that's you know, another story for another time. Dante Martin, though, of the Flight Club and, of course, of Top Flight. Daichi Hashimoto, the Junior Heavyweight Champion, and he's making his debut here in the Best Super Juniors. That's a, a a big start to have your first Best Super Junior coming in as a champion. You got that big bullseye on your back, and it's a tough, tough deal. Tough deal for sure. It's Hook, he made his debut last year. As far as uh, you know, his first Best Super Junior last year. This year's looking to climb the, uh, the, the ladder a little bit here in Block B. He's got a tough block, but... We'll see how he does against a lot of his top talent and a lot of former winners as well. It's Francesco Akira, a man who has also, you know, he made his debut in the Best Super Juniors at our very first one way back when. Uh, so it's hard to believe now that he would have been in New Japan for six years. It's wild, uh, but here we are. And uh, as far as, and we even beat actual New Japan as far as bringing in Francesco Akira to uh, New Japan, which is pretty fun. As far as it's hard to believe, it's been that long. Kushida, of course, back with us. And he returns again for the Best Super Juniors. A man who's made it to the finals and won, I believe, three times off the top of my head. Can he make it four? That would be incredible to see Kyle O'Reilly, last year's winner. Lee Moriarty of the United Empire. And a man that has had a lot of success for somebody that young, too. And another guy who's been here. Pretty much since the beginning, and uh, as far as six years in New Japan, looking for that big time moment, it can come right here with getting a, a huge win in winning the Best Super Juniors. Jason Lee, former Junior Heavyweight Champion, has never won the Best Super Juniors, but you never know. As far as time will tell to see how he will do here. And our final participant, Shota Yumino, the Shooter, making his Best Super Juniors debut. So I want to say that's correct, because I don't think we had him. When he was a young lion as a in the best superior. It's kind of crazy. If you look at uh, the first one we did. as uh, the 27th one. You know, we had Flamita. Before he was Demonic Bamba. When he was Kento. Gobin. Uh, Kachimato. Rice Gutaguchi. Sho and Yo in the same block. Despy. Which, uh... I forget what happened to Despy. To be honest. I, I don't think we let him go. Maybe we did. Might have let him go. As, uh... Yeah, then Jonathan Gresham, Ray Fenix, Robbie Eagles, Rocky Romero, uh, Yui Mora, of course Ishimori, Bandito, El Fantasmo, 
It's wild to think where we came from. A lot of these guys still are with us. And, you know, Black Taurus tied with the Ishimori, but he ended up losing out because of a tiebreaker. Wild, wild, wild stuff there. Yeah, and there's a Romu. I believe it was Sho in Ishimori, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we'll just take a look. Yeah. Yep, as far as it was, show. That's what I thought. And it was, uh, that best Super Juniors was very, very cursed from what I remember. Then we, um, we went to a 12-man block for a couple of years. And we went back to the, uh, we went from a, a four block at one point. Which was, I mean, our junior division is just not kind of built for that, I think. I think it stretched us out a little too thin. Oh, no, Shoti Umino was in it last year. Yeah, that's what I thought. So his return in the best Super Juniors. There we go. Or oh, actually, this would be two years ago. Rather, yeah, because, yeah, it would be 33. Doi. Um, but, yeah, as far as I'm trying to think, who else? Uh, but there's a couple of big names that are kind of omitted from this. Uh, we will not be having, uh, as far as, no Drew Parker, no John Silver, no Roderick Strong, uh, no Ryu Lee, no Samurai Del Sol. Some big names not, not uh, included in this. But uh, it's given an opportunity to a lot of guys to step up, fill that void, and for some it's it's a return, for some it's the end. We got a lot going on, a lot of, sh lot of shake it up here for the two blocks. And we're going to start off with, of course, night one, day one, as uh, we'll see how it starts off with a Satoshi Kochi and Pasigal Microphone Work to Tamora and Ishii Pasigal Microphone Work to Tamora down forward. So our main event for this first night here... Do love that Chad Gable's taking on Taiji Shimori, a man who's making his debut, a man who's making you know his final start of his final run of the best Super Juniors. Very, very fun. I think our main event's going to be Airbender and Fuminari Abe, though. So Airbender's going to beat Abe. So that's a big win for him. First time meeting. Oh, no. Actually, yeah, first singles match. But they've had a couple of junior matches uh, last year. Multi-man matches, but we, we get to see how they do. As far as in the singles competition, and uh, Airbender's going to get the win there. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what's going to be this uh, Steal the Show matchup. Is it this match? No. Nope. SB Kendo and Fred Yehai. Is SB going to beat Fred Yehai in 22 minutes? That's a big win. Gulak and Black Taurus. Drew Gulak's going to beat Black Taurus. As far as uh, they had a match last year in the Best Super Juniors, Black Taurus won that match. So second time meeting here, a return match. I think we're going to have that be the co-main, at least for now. Uh, yeah, yeah, and SB Kendo, I want to say they've had a couple of matches. Yes, yeah, yeah, beaten them every time. And as far as they were in the best Super Juniors matchup last year, then they had a Road 2 Sakura Genesis match in 2021. So for SB to finally get a win, nice to see. So I'm assuming the Monarch Bomba in Kawado is the Steel the Show matchup. It is, so the Bomb Squad members colliding on the first night with Kawado getting a win in two points. In our first matchup to kick off the block action and also to kick off Best of Juniors, Chad Gable, Taiji Shimori. As I, I knew I was going to call him Chaz Gable. Uh, or I was going to call him Chad Gable, rather, so we'll just go ahead and change that to Chaz. But yes, Chaz Gable beating Taiji Shimori. In our opening contest, the Arnold Fujinami, Ren Narita, taking on the young lines of Hiroshi Miyoshi in the newest young line, Maroka Takado, as... Takato won't be getting the loss, which is fortunate for him. Oh, Shimiyoshi is going to take the fall on this first night. Now we got to Oh, no, we're good. All right, I was about to say, we got to find a, a place we can run this show. So it looks like we're going to run the Nagata City Gymnasium here. Nippon uh, Yeishi Arena, that would be, a, would be a sellout. Yeah, we'll actually run that instead. That works for me. Perfect. Let's run it. 47 for the opener. Not great. <laughs> Poor way to stop the show. Uh, Fujinami did well. Uh, Marita was almost in the 50s. Would have been nice to get him in there again, but again, it was it's a tough call. Tough call. But man, what a debut from Maroka Takedo. I mean, he... Uh, th uh, 35 is really, really good for your first ever match as a young lion. That is very, very impressive. Well, I mean, this guy's the limit for it with that. That, that is huge. Shaz Gable beating Daiji Shimori with the grand amplitude. I'm assuming we wouldn't be able to call it that, but that's all right. As a 22-26 victory for Chad Gable. Yeah, I mean, if the crowd was into it, this would have been a lot better, but 
for his rating, for old Chaz Gable, he did pretty well for himself. Demonic Mamba in Kawado. They don't click here. 47 for both guys. Could have went either way. But we gave it to Kawado there in 1045. 69 for Fred Ye and SB Kendo. Nice. Is SB Kendo with the Brain Buster over Ye High in 2159? 65 for Jugulak and Black Taurus. The Gulak from Jugulak in 2040. Not a bad match again. And a 64. Oof. As far as. So, but this one would actually kind of kick it up a notch, but that's alright. As Airbender beats uh, Fulminar Abe. He was really off his game, so he probably would have outperformed him had he gotten the victory, but. Yeah, I mean, that was. Uh, Pretty abysmal start, to be honest. Kind of crazy this was the best match on the card. I was hoping we at least get it into the 70s, even an 80. But, Christ, what a start. Not great. <laughs> Not a great start. But, well, luckily, luckily, though, it is a tour show, so it's not the end of the world, and it's not going to hurt us. We'll see how the second day goes, as far as for Block B. Right now, Block A kind of set the bar quite low. And uh, we'll see if Block B will be able to just crush it and have a great show. Alrighty, day two. As far as backstage incidents, Tanashi and Shobo Takibo. He's passing on selling tips. Selling tips, rather, to Shobo Takibo. As for our main event for Block B here. Um, it's a close one. I like Dante Martin and Kyle O'Reilly. Oh, we're setting this for Steal the Show. All right. Well, Kyle O'Reilly's going to beat him in 12 minutes. I, like, I mean, it's a clash of styles a little bit. You know, Dante looks to obviously use his aerial abilities to get the win, and Kyle O'Reilly looks to kind of keep him grounded and work on, you know, work on a body part, maybe work on a leg, and just kind of try to keep him down to the mat. Well, you know, I, I like that match, I guess, from that perspective. Hook and Shota Yumino might be the tactical masterclass match if it is. As we know, Hook is not great technically, which is very, very funny to say. Uh, but as far as we'll see how he does... It sucks that he's so over in America, but he's still trying to find his way in Japan. Because he'd be one of our best juniors if he had that overness in America, but it is what it is. I, mean, I guess we'll have Daichi Hashimoto and Bushi be at least the penciled in main for now. As uh, Hashimoto's going to beat Bushi 22 minutes, first time meeting there. As uh, the champion avoids the champion's curse that seems to follow a lot of goddamn talent. At least for when we book. And then Francesco Akira and Kushida can be the co-main, as Kushida's beating Francesco Akira in 28 minutes. Good win for Kushida there with two points, and Jason Lee and Lee Moriarty. Which is a fun little matchup, as Jason Lee will be beating Lee Moriarty in also 26 minutes. Oh, we'll actually just change it up. We'll make it 25, just for it to be a little different. Then our opening contest, Dragon's Den of Daniel Garcia and Show. Another guy I would have loved to have in this was Daniel Garcia. He's really... Uh, been been kicking ass, especially still only 27. It's hard to believe that when you think he... I mean, we started six years ago, so we started when he was 21, and he's still not even 30. He's got nine years' experience. Very, very crazy uh, to see that, but Garcia's going to get the win there. Um, again, I mean, Yorotoki, uh, Suzuki, and then Takato, uh, and Moroka, rather, Takato, is, uh, you know, he just debuted, and he had, uh, like, a 35... Your Toki's been around for a little bit. I want to say it's been about a year or so. Maybe not a full-on year. Yeah, it was August, so... Close to a year. Hasn't had a lot of matches, though, unfortunately. It's not great for having been around for almost a year, and he's only had 15 matches or so. I guarantee you, Takato's going to outperform him. I just got a feeling. Just, just got a feeling. Uh, we'll take a look at the... Venue locations we can pick. Let's see, we got. Where's the. Uh, yeah, we like to run this Yunaga Gymnasium. 3,000 people is a good little. Meet in the middle. Yeah, we'll just kind of stick with it. Because 4,750 is a little too big for us. 56. Is, yep, yeah, performed him. 37. Dan Garcia did well, though, with his 63s. He gets him on the Dragon Sleeper. As, uh, yeah, Takito. He, uh, he outperformed your Toki Suzuki. A lot of green, though. Commentary doing a really good job again. Danielson doing well with him and Garcia. And it's just it's working out quite nicely. As Hook's still injured, so he's got to deal with that for a little bit. Probably the first week or so of this tournament. So, first couple of matches, he's going to be pretty bad. But Shota Yumino, at least, 
did well with the Death Rider victory in 1818. So 69 for Dante Martin and Kyle O'Reilly. Nice. So that ties the best match that happened on the previous night. As Kyle O'Reilly gets the ankle lock submission victory. And 1139, only a point difference between the two men. And there's 75 from Lee Moriarty and Jason Lee. God damn, Jason Lee was not even close. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Jason Lee, it's crazy to think he was a junior boy champion at one point, and now he's getting destroyed by Lee Moriarty, who is the man. I mean, Lee Moriarty's awesome, so I'm, I'm not too upset with that. Francesca Kira outperformed Kushida. Really no surprise when you think about Kushida's age at this point. Again, he's early 40s at this rate. As uh, Kushida with the Supernova Press over Francesco Akira, though, in 25-49. So, 77 for our main event, Daichi Hashimoto and Bushi. As, uh, it's crazy that Bushi's still one of the best performers we have in the junior division. He's just been fantastic for us. It's Vertical Drop Brainbuster from Hashimoto on 22-25. Yeah, Block B is the block so far. Uh, it seems like it. A lot of talent there in Block B for the champion's block, if you will. First two nights in the books, as uh, we'll see how... Block A can answer as far as will they bounce back with a good showing, or will it still be the kind of lesser of the two blocks? All right, day three. As another backstage incident, Kumitsu Kasai, as he was about for Russell's court, accused of shaking, or for, uh, accused rather of forgetting to shake another worker's hand, entering a locker room. As the judge Shinsuke Nakamura found them guilty and says to buy drinks for after the show. So as far as uh, we have Chaz Gable and Drew Gulak, yep, that's probably the tactical masterclass matchup. If I had to take a shot in the dark. Ishimori and Airbender, Kuwato and SB Kento, Abe and the Monica Bomba, and then Black Torus and Fred Yei. Interesting stuff, you know, as far as to what, what's going to be the main is probably the toughest thing to figure out out of this Block A. Um, I, I like this match here in Yei and Black Torus. Right now, we'll have it be the main for now. And Kuwato and SB Kento is another Steal the Show matchup, so back to back Steal the Show matches for Kuwato. Demonic Bomba in Abe. Demonic Bomba upsets Fuminor Abe. First time meeting, too. What an upset win. Yeah, Abe's a little unhappy about that one. No surprise there. Ishimori and Airbender. Gonna be 23 minutes of this at Hiro Dad Airbender. is gonna be Ishimori. So, tough start for the veteran. Another first time meeting, but as far as for Ishimori, two straight losses for him. And then, of course, the technical masterclass of Chaz Gable and Drew Gulak. As Chaz is going to beat him. Now, what we're going to see, as far as we're going to have the Young Lion match before we talk about this, is uh, the Velocities, which again, another group of fellows. I was like, very, very kind of stuck in, stuck in my crawl about this one because this one was tough. Because they are solid singles-wise. You know, it's crazy to think Jude's only 30, and Paris, I think, is 30. Yeah, he's 30 as well. Both guys super talented. Both guys are great. The problem is... They're never healthy, uh, as far as, well, I wouldn't say never. I, I kind of, that's a little harsh, because they've only been injured, especially, like, only once. And it was really not, I mean, it was, it was a big deal, because we had to, you know, kind of change the, the belts and whatnot, as far as get the belts off of them. But, uh, actually, yeah, I don't even think Paris has been hurt. I think it's just been Jude that's been hurt. It's pretty shocking. Oh, no, he, he's been hurt a couple of times now, I'm seeing. All right, so, yeah. Yeah, he has been hurt twice just in 2015. Not great. And then let's see what Jude's been up to. Oh, yeah, he's been hurt a lot, actually. Yeah, that was the right call. <laughs> they just, you know, that happens sometimes where guys just kind of get hurt. I think that might be a toughness thing, if I had to guess. Does it even say kind of what, what each thing kind of... Because there's some that's kind of... It's obvious, but there are some that's like, maybe that's, that's something to do with it as well. I know there is, um, attributes like that. As far as, um, like injury prone or whatnot. But yeah, so that was just a kind of a call on my part. Drew London getting, uh, the win there. As there's a, um, handshake after the, after the match. I just want to make sure it's minor. It's not that big of a deal. It's just, you know, after the match. Gulak and Gable. Shaking hands. That will make it even star quality. It's not like they're going to go to promo or something. Maybe acting. Probably would have been better there. 
But you're just a little uh, potential, like, oh, you know, just kind of seeing two of the very best technically ballot out in one man. Obviously, uh, beating him fair and square. And just to show respect between uh, Gable and Gulak. So we'll see. Oh, yeah, we're on Hokuto here for day three. Yeah, we usually... We don't have a lot of great places for Hokuto, because it's going to be the 5,000-seater. But that's all right. It's better than not running here at all. 65, though, for the Velocities against Shobotaki Bo and Ukiya Miyagi. As Drew Lennon getting the win in 10-26. You got, you know, got the Tag Team Specialist bonus for the Velocities. Great chemistry from Ukiya Miyagi and Shobotaki Bo. All around that nice little opener. And a 78 for Chaz Gable and Drew Gulak. One point difference. Great amplitude again from Chaz. And uh, he beats Gulak at 26-23. Two straight victories. Four points for him already. Cooking with gas. And, wow. I mean, it's the star quality. What What's the language barrier got to do with that? <laughs> Alright. Weird. Very weird. And uh, Ishimori and Airbender, they don't click. Bit of an awkward battle. It's still a decent little match. 72 as uh, Airbender gets the win with the 630. 22-31. 74 for Demonic Bamba and Fumanarabe. The 450 splash for Demonic Bamba in 2409. What an upset win for Mr. Bamba. That is huge. A 63. This should have been way lower. That's that's a my bad. But again, I love the LIJ bomb squad rivalry, and I just feel like this could have we could have got away with it being pretty high on the card, but probably a little too high now I'm looking at, back at it. And then for Black Taurus and Fred Yehai. Fred Yehai with the Koji Clutch. It's an upset. It's a, you know, it's a Black Taurus, six points better. 72 for the segment rating there. All around, it's a much better show. I had a feeling that Gable and Gulak was going to be the best thing on the card. But again, kind of probably, you know, it needed to be a tactical masterclass, I felt like. And yeah, you know, probably should have stuck with like Abe and Bamba. And on top, and th it, really, it's no big deal. It is funny that the steal the show matchup was the worst thing on the card, besides the handshake, which was bullshit because it it should have mattered. There's no language barrier to really <laughs> fuck that up, but well, I get it. it. Is what it is. Uh, but yeah, th that was um a much much needed bounce back for him for Block A. We'll see how Block B does here for Day Four. All right, and again with the backstage instance. Oh my god, so many of them. As uh, Naito, Pasagon tips on psychology to Hiroshi Miyoshi. All these young lions are going to need it, though. Uh, Nagata, Pasagon, psychology to the great Okan. I just love how both Kojima and Nagata are still passing on their tips as far as microphone work from Kojima on to Tamora. And Nakamura, passing on microphone work to Noria Takagawa. And uh, Nakamura also passing on psychology to the uh, newest young lion there in Maroka. Takado, and then uh, Tomorishi and Tomoya Tom Ford, as Tomorishi passing on tips on microphone works to him as well. Alrighty, so the main event for this night, I, I love the O'Reilly Akira match. Also like da uh, Daichi Yashimoto and Dante Martin, to be honest. Both of these could work as the main. Yeah, especially with Dante beating Daichi Yashimoto. So he beats the junior champion. Uh, first time meeting as well, so potentially that might go wrong, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Dante gets a junior boy title matchup now in the future. That's fun for the fucking what's he gotta be now. He's, I think he's around my age, so he'd be, oh, no, no, never mind. Yeah, he's young as fuck. <laughs> never mind. Oh, my God, he's younger than I am right now. <laughs> this is in 2026. Wow. Only 24 years old. That is crazy. I always forget he's super young. Man, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, Daichi Yashimoto gets the... Or, he loses, rather. Uh, excuse me, to Tante Martin. So then Kyle O'Reilly, Francesca Akira can go here, as Akira's going to beat O'Reilly. First time meeting as well. A lot of first time meetings here, because, again, we just... Uh, we got a young group of, of guys still. And uh, as far as... Sure, there's a lot of them that have been around forever now. Even so, they're still super young. Like Shota Yuma and Lee Moriarty, they've been here from the start. And I bet this is... Yeah, this is the first time meeting. Singles wise, and yeah, they've been here since the beginning. Wild, uh, but Lee Moriarty is going to be choked to Yumino in the tactical match class matchup. Bushi and Hook is probably the steal of the show matchup. It is, and Hook's going to beat him. What a win! 
Oh man, as Bushi's a little happy about that. I get that. He's probably gonna get outperformed extremely bad. Is a hook, so that's gonna probably be embarrassing. And Jason Lee's gonna beat Kushida. First time meeting here as well. Wow, as uh, I think every single match is the first time meeting. I don't think I looked at um, Hook and Bushi, so that might actually be. Oh, didn't mean to hit that. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's the first time meeting too. Wow. Uh, that's pretty cool to think as far as first time singles matches for all five of those matches. Then Brody Lee and Will Ops, the Dark Order, taking on Oleg Bolton and Oscar Libu, as far as Will Ops going to get the win there. Over the Young Lions, and, uh, see where we're gonna run this day four show. Yeah, I mean, we got the Zebu Arena. I th again, I always think there's a 3,500, but there's the 4,000. Which, again, we could run. Yeah, I think we're gonna actually run it. Yeah, I think that this will work for me. Alrighty. So we get here for day four. As a 67. For the opening contest, Will Hobbs, Brody Lee doing a good job there. They have the great chemistry, which is so very funny, because we just now found that out. Uh, recently, thanks to Calvin Tinkman's injury. But yeah, Will Hobbs still looking like a million bucks out there. It's no surprise. Good stuff. Good stuff. 75 for Shota Umino and Lee Moriarty. So the joint custody for Moriarty getting the win in 26-21. A great performance again from the young man. Killing it. Hook again with the injury. Gets outperformed significantly because of it. Even without his injury, I think it still would have been pretty bad. But a 62 nonetheless. Hook getting a massive two points, though. And the Hong Kong Tornado win over at Kushida. Pretty close. 62-58. Not terrible. But, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it, I mean, so far, that Toxical Masterclass matchup has just been light years ahead of everything else. As the Utaka from Francesco Akira over Kyle O'Reilly in 23-54. Not a bad little matchup there as well. Our main event of 78, as Dante Martin beats Daichi Hashimoto with the springboard cutter in 26-26. Love it. So I think what we're going to do is actually, I want to say it's going to be between the week, that kind of one week time period where the finals and Dominion kind of overlap, where there's, you know, some time in between. I think on that strong taping, we're going to have those two have that junior heavyweight title matchup. So that's going to be huge. I think, uh, you know, because we rarely do title matches on strong that are non, you know, the non-New Japan strong kind of titles. So that'd be nice to have an IWGP Junior Boy title matchup on that show. So that's just kind of the plan right now. So yeah, as far as uh, four days in, four days out, no one's gotten hurt. So that's a good sign. Uh, hopefully, you know, we'll take a look at the standings here after day eight to kind of see how it all as, uh, well, we might wait a little longer. We might, we might do day 10. I think that's going to be a lot easier. So, yeah, we'll, we'll catch you guys there for the next day, though, for day 5. All right, day 5. As, uh, Ken backstage incident. Tanashi passing on psychology to Shobo Takyabo. Tensei Naito passing on selling to Kimiyagi. Aito passing on psychology to Hiroshi Miyoshi. And then, uh, Ishii passing on microphone work to Tomoya Tom Ford. Boy, oh boy. So, a, a multi-man matchup. On the card, a six-man tag, Bomb Squad, Peace, Love, and War. We're going to have an eight-man on the uh, final show between uh, these two squads. So that's going to be a lot of fun to see. It's a little preview of that. Uh, Black Taurus and Chaz Gable. And that's another tactical masterclass matchup. But this time, though, Chaz Gable's going to lose. So the first time he loses here, it's going to be against Black Taurus. As uh, for uh, the Dark Order specifically. But man, for Black Taurus, that's a big, big victory. The way Chaz Gable's been... At least performing as of late. He's definitely a man to beat. As right now. And SB Kento beating Fuminori Abe. Poor Fuminori Abe here. He has had just a hell of a time. After you know, being someone that has been a former winner himself. A former junior weight champion. I believe he is already only uh, one. Yeah, he hasn't even won yet. Three straight losses. Crazy. Crazy for Fuminori Abe. We'll give them a little bit more time at least. That's, uh, that's a tough break. Tough, tough break there for Fuminori Abe. Demonic Bamba and Taiji Shimori. As Bamba's going to beat Ishimori. So that's going to be three straight losses for Taiji Shimori as well. So not a great start for him. Airbender and Drew Gulak. So Airbender will be beating Drew Gulak in 26 minutes. Great little matchup. I think we're going to have that be the co-main. And uh, then the 
Um, next matchup, Coado and Yehai, as Fred Yehai will be getting the win in 24 minutes. As, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a decent little show here. Decent little show. And, of course, the six-man matchup, which I believe it's going to be, yeah, it's uh, Hiromu, Riley, and Samurai Del Sol against Coughlin, or not, yeah, Alex Coughlin, Cav uh, Caveman Oog, and Juice Ramses. Juice is going to beat Samurai Del Sol in 20 minutes. A big win for Peace, Love, and War going into their uh, final matchup with uh, the Bomb Squad. So, yeah, I think we're on the Bibu Beacon Plaza. Because I don't think there's a 4,000 seater. It's 5,000, man. No, 4,000. Let's run it. 81 for the opening contest. Is Aroma Ryu Lee doing a tremendous job? As was Samurai Del Sol. He outperformed Juice and Coughlin and Oo. So, all around great stuff on the Bomb Squad, but they still lose. It's Juice Robinson hitting the Pulp Friction over Samurai Del Sol. So, 75 are Black Taurus and Chaz Gable as. Uh, Gable outperformed him. Black Torus, though, still gets the victory with the Infernal Suplex. So a hot start for Chaz, but he gets cut short, at least with his winning streak, getting stopped here by Black Torus. Ishimori and Demonic Bomba. Man, uh, Bomba was really off his game. Probably should have gave that to Ishimori, looking back. But two points for him, nonetheless. 72 for Yehai and Kawato. As Yehai with the Koji Clutch in 24-28. Great victory there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's good stuff. Good stuff from Yehi. 76 for Airbender and Drew Gulak. 630 from Airbender over Drew Gulak at 2607. Good stuff there. And a 78 for our main event. As Fulminar Abe losing to the brain buster of SB Kenta. Poor Fulminar Abe, though. He's been another guy that's had a great performance so far in these best of the junior matches. But has came up short as far as victories-wise. But a pretty good show. Um, really, the one match that didn't hit the mark was Bamba and Ishimori. Which, that was because, really, Bamba was off his game. All around, though, good little show. Mainly that opener kicked us off with a hot match. and All around, good stuff. And on to day six, we go. Oh, my God. Another backstage incident is, uh, with Brian Nielsen. He's passing on microphone work to Daniel Garcia. And he's passing on microphone work to Dante Martins. That was quick, at least. So, uh, for this... A card the opening contest. Hell of an opening contest. Probably could be the main event. But we're going to have it be a technical match to class opening contest with a tag match. Claudio Castagnoli, Shator Shino, former IWGP Tag Team Champions, taking on the team of Los Sombra and Shingo. And of course, we're going to have the multi man matchup, uh, the Never Will Six Man contest with these two men, plus uh, Tucker, uh, as far as Ito, Tucker or Ito, against the Never will be six man champions of a low single of Ronald Abre's day at bone. So then, uh, as far as the main event, probably Akira and Daichi Hashimoto. Just feels like that's the best call here. And it's a draw, our first time limit draw here. So Hashimoto, interesting start. One win, one draw, one loss. And uh, so, as far as he's got three points on the tournament so far. But of course, those two, this is a rematch. From, was that Wrestling Dutaku, I want to say? I believe, yeah, that was... Oh, it was Sakura Genesis. So, yeah, it's been a you know, couple of... Just a month away. A month ago, rather. Uh, so, quick little turnaround for him. All around one point for both men. Uh, Lee Moriarty and uh, Kushida can be the co-main. As Moriarty beats Kushida. Uh, they've had one match in the past. First, uh, their first ever encounter was a 72 Two years ago in the Best Super Juniors. So it's going to be around that same kind of level. Maybe even better. It's weird because Kushida's gotten worse since then. But Moriarty's gotten better. So might be better. Might be a little worse. So Yumino and Bushi can go here. Shota Yumino beats Bushi. 22 minute matchup here. They've had a couple of matches. Uh, they're one and one. All of them. Uh, well one was in the Best Super Juniors. And then later that year they had a road to sh uh, match at uh, the Wrestle Dynasty tour. So they're one on one in that, and they were slightly better each time. So hopefully, we'll see something along those lines. And Dante Martin and Hook, as I'm assuming the Steel of Show matchup is, Dante's going to beat Hook, and then Jason Lee and Kyle O'Reilly will follow that with O'Reilly beating Jason Lee in 24 minutes. So I actually like Lee and uh, O'Reilly here in this spot, just because Jason Lee weirdly has not been performing as high as I would have hoped for. Yeah, I think we got a pretty good card here, nonetheless. Obviously, that main event's going to be what makes this 
card really, really pop. So I'm not too worried about it, but yeah, we'll run the uh, large hall here in, at the uh, Matsuatsu Yama uh, City Auditorium, I believe. Oh, large hall. Yeah, it is still the City Auditorium, but it's just the large hall section of it. Alrighty. So 78, yeah, for the opener. Great matchup. Ashino, tremendous stuff. There's Claudio pins Shingo with a neutralizer. Very good matchup there. 67 for Lee and O'Reilly. Yeah, I mean, O'Reilly with a 62. It's the one with the ankle lock. Good stuff there. Man, Hook's injury. Yeah, it's still, still affecting him early on. Hoping it gets cleared up sooner rather than later. Uh, but Dante Martin gets the win nonetheless with a 450. And 1039, a 70 from Shota Yumino and Bushi. Could have went either way there. As uh, 64 for both guys. It's a good little match. Good little match for him. And there's uh, the Death Rider getting the win there. Ah, oh, man. That's a tough injury there. Type 3. Super Condylar Fracture for Lee Moriarty. At least it wasn't um, bad enough to where it had to change the finish, but still, that sucks. You never want to see an injury like that. And our uh, main event, though, a time limit draw. They get to the 81. Good little performance there. Chemistry boost goes well. Hot crowd, great ref, great road agent. Just all around good shit there to make that work out. Uh, tremendously there for that main event. Better than the opener. That is shocking. To say at least. Sucks about the injury, but we made up for it with that main event. So we'll see ex exactly how long Moriarty's going to be out for and whatnot. Um, as far as that would suck if he's out, though. Because he, he was one of our better performers of that block. Tough, tough break there. And then a couple more shows. We'll take a look at the standings for the first time. And yeah, just, um, just fingers crossed for Moriarty. Well, Lee Moriarty's out. <laughs> As, uh, luckily, the surgery was a success, but he's going to be out for about a month. So, he's out. Um, because it's so early in the tournament, going to have him be replaced by somebody at United Empire. It's going to be Gavin McGavin, so he gets a step up and uh, fill his shoes, potentially. As far as maybe even get a, a big victory. Uh, one, oh, you know, as far as there's a lot of um, big-time matches still left. You know, Moriarty never faced uh, Daichi Hashimoto, junior champion, so he's got that match to look forward to. And yeah, just all around big things happening now with that shakeup. Uh, as far as for, before we run the show, we got a couple of backstage incidents. So your Toki Suzuki was brought for Russell's court. He's being an hour late to pick up his assigned driver partner. So the judge, Shinsuke Nakamura, found him guilty and sentenced to buy a drink, or buy, rather, pay, rather, Jesus, pay for his trout partner's meals the next three shows. Tanashi is uh, passing on selling tips to Shobo Takibo. So I got a women's tag match as uh, Yudami Ayashista and uh, Te Honma against Sakiaki and Natsui Sumai as uh, oh, yeah, this is going to be a technical mass class matchup. Dona Del Mundo going to lose here as Yutami Ayashista gets a win going into his uh, her match with Julia. We'll see how they do. Uh, Black Taurus and El Hero del Airbender. My god, obviously Vikingo and Black Taurus. This match is very much a... Can, would love to obviously be a part of this in the best Super Junior setting. Uh, these two, some of the best luchadors in the world, get to have a hell of a match. You got one of the best high flyers and the best base in wrestling. Well, one of the best bases, I'll say. Him and Claudio, it's tough. Very, very tough. But he's... Incredible, and uh, especially paired with Vikingo, that, that guy match would be insane. And that, it has been insane, from what I've seen from them. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Chaz Gable and Frey Yehai, though, what a match this is as well. As uh, Chaz is going to beat Yehai, it's going to be a nice co -main. We get to bump him up. As far as for Gable, he's you know been in the technical masterclass matches, which is great for him, but we want him to be a little higher on the card. You know, We want him to be able to at least have something going for him. And then Demonic Bumba and Drew Gulak, so... We've been giving Demonic Bomba a lot of fun wins as of late. This one, though, I think we're going to have to change. Uh, he's already beaten. You know, he's already got the huge win over Abe. He's got the big win over Ishimori. I think he should lose here. You know, because Gulak, he lost to Gable. He beat Black Taurus, but then he lost to Airbender. I think right now those guys, you know, give him two wins, two losses. I think this is the best case scenario. And I think he's going to outperform him, too. Abe and Kawado. Kawado beating Abe. This one's another one I think I'm going to change. First time meeting. Kawado's done pretty well. He's gotten a couple of wins. Uh, as far as uh, he lost to Bushi. 
That's, I mean, that's kind of... Oh, that's uh, about to say, uh, this was earlier. So yeah, he's lost to Bomba. He's, uh, lo uh, or he, he's rather beaten Bomba. He's beaten SP Kinto. He just lost to Yei previously. Yeah, I think this is the right time to have um, Abe beat him. Because again, Abe, just tough start. You know, he lost to SP Kinto. He's lost to Demonic Bomba, and he's lost to Airbender. Having four straight losses for him would be pretty brutal. Uh, we need to start the comeback phase for him, and I think that's a great, great chance for him. And then SP Kinto. I think we're going to have him lose here. I, again, I think Ishimori should get a win over uh, SB here. Now, they've had a couple of matches. They're 1-1. One one. Uh, SB Kendo the first time around uh, two years ago. Was 71. Last year was a 65. So, potentially could be around that same range. We'll have to uh, wait and see how it uh, really plays out. But I, I like this card. There's a lot of things I like about it. I think we're going to keep it right where we're at here on the card lineup. Um, but I, say, I think we've kind of ran everywhere besides Kanto. Oh, no, we haven't ran Kansai. Yeah, we'll go halfway. I think that's probably for the best. Yeah, we'll run the, uh, the, the former Osaka Perfectional Gym, now the Idon Arena in Osaka. See how day seven runs. Seventy for the opener. Sakiaki and Natsui. Um, great team. Excellent chemistry there. They performed really, really well. They outperformed Tehanma and Yutami Ayashista, but they still lose nonetheless, unfortunately. But uh, Yutami Ayashista with a Samoan drop in eighteen nineteen. That's pretty great. Uh, what a finish that is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's a good little opener. Seventy will gladly take that seventy four for the next matchup. Taiji Shimori with the bloody cross. Over SP Kento outperformed him. Glad we made the switch there. It's good stuff. Another switch that paid off. Drew Gulak with the spine splitter over Demonic Bomba in 1048. And another one that paid off. Figure 4 leg lock for Foreman Arabe over Kawato uh, as he gets a submission victory in 2421. And that's another good matchup here. 78 here between Chaz Gable and Fred Yehai as uh, Gable gets the win with 72. And another great amplitude. The victory in an 81 for our main event as Airbender beating Black Toad Roos with a 6.30 in 28.27. What a show. Hell of a card. That was. It all, it got better and better. Uh, they, I mean, you can't picture a better card, to be honest. The way that flowed together. That was awesome. Awesome stuff. And that was really because of the change of the finishes. Uh, those first three block matches of the night, changing those finishes really, really saved us. Awesome stuff. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What a show. And so on to the next night we go. We're almost at the end of May. So, I mean, it'll, it'll be close to the home stretch once we get into June. Uh, we'll have about eight shows left once we take a look at the standings after day 10 to see how it all plays out. But uh, so far, you know, we've had the one injury. So now sucks for Moriarty, but hopefully that's going to be it. And on to day eight we go. Alrighty, finally, no backstage incidents here. Uh, whereas we have Jay White and Miro taking on the Young Lions of Baka Nokomoto and Kuma Tsukasai. Also going to have the tremendous rivalry rekindled in Kushida and Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, it's a technical masterclass match, so it's actually going to kick off the show, and Kushida's going to beat him. Kyle beat him in the G... Oh, they had a G1 match. And then they had the uh, Junior Everway title matchup in 2023. So they were 1-1 one one going into this matchup, but this is um, the first... Uh, best to be juniors matchup for him in a hot ass minute. So that's kind of cool to see. Uh, but yeah, Kushida beating Kyle O'Reilly there. Jay White and Miro. It's, uh, yeah, we'll just add the Baka and Okamoto and Kuma to Kasai now. Show to Yuma on Dante Martin. Hell of a match. Uh, Dante's going to beat him. Dante Martin's been on a hell of a roll. Uh, Yuma no and Dante, though, first time meeting again. We'll put it up pretty high, though. I don't know if it's going to be the main, but it's going to be pretty high. A hook and Francesco Kira. So, Hook's injury heals in about 10 days or so. So, he still has a couple of more shows to deal with that injury. So, we're going to keep this pretty low. Uh, Francesco Kira is going to beat Hook as well. But hopefully, that it, it's still a good little matchup. Bushi and Gavin McGavin. We'll see how Gavin does in his... Uh, God, I think this might not be his best Super Junior's debut. I thought it was, but I think we put him in one. I think it was this one. Nope. No, nope, maybe not. 
could have swore he had one. But uh, he did work a lot, luckily, once um, Melbourne Championship Wrestling signed him. But yeah, I mean, he's been someone we've had, obviously, from the beginning. And has been a part of uh, United Empire since then. It's crazy to think a 17-year vet at 31 years old. A lot of time. Uh, in on the uh, on the mat, if you will, and uh, has a tough, tough, uh, tough, tough outing though against Bushi in his first ever Best Super Juniors matchup. And then Daichi Ashimoto and Jason Lee. Ashimoto is going to be Jason Lee in 25 minutes. Yeah, that's a tough one. You know, as far as from a card placement perspective, I think we're going to have it be the co-main. It's funny, you know, how one injury can kind of change the way a block looks. Because Block B right now, they had a great start, but now Block A is running away with it. I think just the star power is getting to a point where it's just too tough to kind of handle. So I think we're going to run Chubu again, to be honest. Yeah, run the Gata City Gymnasium yet again. See what we get. For our opening kind of 65 for Miro and Jay White. Jay White, the Blade Runner of a Bakan Okamoto in 945. Yeah, uh, Kiba Kasai, Bakan Okamoto still got a ways to go. Especially from a young lion phase, but not bad. Yeah, it's Kushida and Kyle O'Reilly. got the pretty good chemistry, which is right on brand. Kushida with the Kushida lock in 22-53. Not a bad way to start off the uh, the show as far as from the block perspectives. Francesco Kira beating Hook with the y Utaka, rather, as far as the Utaka in 22-06. Yeah, okay matchup. Not great, but eh, at least it got the job done. Bushi beats Gavin McGavin with the MX. Not a great... First match for Gavin McGavin there with a 52. Uh, 77 for Hashimoto and Jason Lee. Thank you, Hashimoto, with a vertical drop. Ray Muster in 70, as he gets a 74. So good matches from Daichi Hashimoto in his first best Super Juniors. He's been one of our best guys. He's been putting on a good good showing as of late. Now, 65, oof, for Dante Martin and Shoti Umino. Could have went either way with this one. Went with Dante, though. All around, that was a decent match. It probably shouldn't have been as high as it was. Should have stuck with... Hashimoto, especially with him being the junior champion, but it kind of is what it is. Tough, tough break there. Uh, but yeah, as far as day nine, we will have pretty good stuff as far as for day nine, locked in. I think uh, we'll have a good show for day ten as well to, to end it out as far as the first kind of ten shows of the tour. Take a look at the standings and uh, go from there to see how the blocks are going to finish out after that because then we'll just have eight shows left. Of the tour. We've uh, went through it pretty fast, it seems like. Oh, I didn't know her. I, I, yeah, I completely forgot they signed him again. And he's back. That's pretty funny. Yeah, when they hired him. Because, yeah, he, oh, he's retired. That's probably for the best, to be honest. He, he should probably stay out of the ring. Yeah, that's probably for the best, to be honest. Oh, uh, yeah, on to uh, day nine. We go. Alrighty, night, or day nine, as far as for backstage incident, Shobo Takibo. Let's go for Russ's court. Cues of having to pick up his share of the tab at the bar. He's getting paid maybe 20 bucks, so not sure what he was trying to pick up on, on the on the share of the tab. I would say just one beverage or an appetizer. <laughs> and if he couldn't cover that, dear God. Uh, but Nagamar found him good the incidents if I drink after the show. But uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty great. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we have a Sonata, Tomoya Tom Ford, he had a tomorrow show, tag match. It's going to probably be the opener. Chaz Gable and El Hero Dead Airbender is probably going to be the main, and we're going to see Chaz beat Airbender, so that's a massive victory there. And uh, then Yehai and Abe might be the master class matchup. No, it's not. It's regular old singles contest, and Abe gets a win over Fred Yehai. I love that match, though. though both those matches are going to be great. Uh, I'm assuming, oh no, I was about to say, I was assuming this was going to be the Steel of Show matchup, but nope, it is not. As Kawado and Taiji Shimori, uh, they've had, oh, well, they've never had a singles match. So first time meeting here in the save. It's kind of wild. It's Kawado getting the win. SB Kinto, Drew Gulak, okay, yeah, this is the technical masterclass matchup. So Drew's going to get the win in 23 minutes. Then Demonic Bamba and Black Taurus, as Black Taurus is going to beat Demonic Bamba there. As I believe that is also a first time meeting, yes. Uh, SB Kento, Drew Gulak, I want to say we've done this before. Yeah, a handful of times. They're one on one, though, so trilogy matchup there. With Gulak getting, uh, with Gulak rather getting the best of it. And then Tamora and Sho against Designers of Perfection. Tamora, Tom Ford beating Sho in 10 minutes there. Good stuff. 
good, good stuff. Oh, yeah, I mean, again, we can run Ganto, but I feel like we've kind of need to wait a little bit longer still. And I think we're just going to run with what we ran for day two. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they saw uh, block B, they can see block A now. I feel like that's the um, the way, the right way to go. It's going to be another sellout, too. So all around, I'm pretty pleased with how this is going to turn out, hopefully. 76 for the opener. Not bad at all as to, as, um, uh, hey, Tamora, Sonata, 79s, 81s, doing a lot of the heavy lifting in that one. Just all around good stuff. 70 for Gulak in SP Kento, the Gulak for Drew Gulak in 2254. 64 for Kawado and Ishimori. Yeah, they did the same. Gonna win either way there. Corkscrew Senton, though, for Kawado nonetheless. Love of the Steel Show match has just been eating shit. Pretty much throughout this tour. Ah, Demonic Bomb and Black Taurus, they don't have any chemistry. Well, you know, first time meeting. That sometimes you gotta roll the dice with that. Uh, but an Infernal Suplex, nonetheless, at least the best guy beat the worst guy. There we go. At least we get bounce back with a good 78 here with uh, Yehai and Abe. I thought we had Abe getting the win here. I guess not. Must have read that wrong. Uh, but yeah, Fred Yehai, I guess, with the Koji Clutch. How about that? I thought Abe was going to turn it around. But uh, the, the comeback gets stopped by Yehai. Then Chaz Gable and El Hiro de Airbender. What another big win for Chaz Gable. It gets one of the great amplitude as well. And all around, just a great... Great little match. That's a that'd be a fun match because that they are two completely polar opposites. Uh, one is a flippy little man, and the other one is an Olympic wrestler. That I feel like could be a pretty solid base for a lot of the lucha shit. But also, I feel like they could have because I mean he at least knows some lucha like ground stuff, and they'll be able to work a lot of holds in as far as like Arabin or well, you know Vikingo in real life. Like they'd have a very fun match. It'd be. Very much like what Dean, what like a Dean Malenko Rey Mysterio Jr. match would be in like today's kind of climate. Basically, how that would be would be very fun. Would be very fun to see. As I mean, yeah. Now we'll take a look at day ten. See how that runs after day ten. We'll take a look at the standings. As uh, I mean, so far, Block A has really pulled away from Block B as of late, thanks to Moriarty's injury. Maybe we'll get it back. It just seems like that's the Hashimoto block, which that's how it should be, though. The champion should be the man for that block, but it's kind of a little bit one-sided uh, as far as that re that regard is. Yeah, on to day 10 we go. Alrighty, day 10, no backstage instance. We can get right into another women's tag match, and it's another um, Queen's Quest against uh, uh, Donna Del Mundo as uh, Saleta and Athena against Utami Aishista and Saya. Kamatani as uh, the main event. It sucks it's not Moriarty and Kyle O'Reilly anymore. Uh, so it's now going to be a tactical match class with Gavin McGavin and Kyle O'Reilly. We're going to give him the win. We're going to see how he does against Kyle O'Reilly in that matchup. That's going to be pretty fun to see. Uh, but the main event is going to be Kushida and Hashimoto now. And Kushida beats Daichi Hashimoto. So the second loss for Daichi Hashimoto, but a big one too. And Kushida gets a win over the junior champion. A lot of fun to see that. Is the man? Is the old man going to do it? It's very funny thinking of Kushida as the old man, but that's where we're at in this world, uh, as far as uh, from that perspective. Dante Martin and Bushi can go... E oh, it's a Steelers Show match. Bushi's going to beat Dante Martin. How about that? What a win. Dante's beaten him twice, so that's a... F oh, no, for one time, rather. Excuse me. I thought it was a... Uh, Oh, this King of Pro Wrestling match. Yeah, this was the four-way. Yeah, that was the qualifying match. So, yeah, but that's, a, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Dante beat him a couple of years back in the Best Super Juniors. So, Bushi gets that win back here. Uh, Francesca Akira and Shota Yumino will be the co-main now. I'm going to give them a little bit more time. Shota Yumino going to beat Francesco Akira. Akira's beaten him twice now. Uh, last year at the Road 2 uh, Royal Quest. And then uh, at last year and during the Best Super Juniors as well. That was a 40 so we go from 40 to 57 to probably mid-60s, maybe even low-70s, I think. So that's great progression, just in that solid year for the shooter. And then Jason Lee and Hook. Hook is still four days away is when his broken finger is going to be 100% healed. Cannot wait for that. But Jason Lee's going to beat him nonetheless here in 24 minutes. Uh, Gavin McGavin, Kyle O'Reilly, of course, the tactical masterclass matchup with McGavin beating him. And O'Reilly is furious about that. I get it, but it'd be kind of fun to see a huge upset like that. As Utami Aishista and Athena 
involved in the finish there. Ten minutes is pretty low. Uh, we're going to give those girls more time. I feel pretty bad about that. Yeah, let's give them about 20. Yeah, there we go. I like that a little bit more. I want to cut down on this. There we go. There's a little change of change of pace a little bit. All right, so um, well, we just gotta go. We could run Kanto. Um, uh, yeah, let's run it. I think it's a cork and all shell. This just feels feels like it. That that'd be the great spot for it. Cause we know we're gonna run Osaka for Dominion. We know that. So as far as for the best Super Junior Finals, I'm not exactly sure how I want to do that. But we might run Kanto, we might not. It's pretty much up in the air, so we might as well run it here. Bruce Sturdum for Athena and Saleta. Another Samoan drop for Yutami Aishista. Uh, Saleta and Yutami Aishista did pretty well, though. Did pretty well, 64, 68. Athena does better in the U.S. You know, our popularity is just not really over in Japan. Asaya Kamatani was the one who caused the Bruce Sternum, so that's just great. It was pretty close between McGavin and O'Reilly. Only a three-point difference, but yeah, he gets the win at 23-57. And yeah, the injury still a big toll there for Hook. Jason Lee was a Hong Kong Tornado, though, in 15-58. That was a 60-72 for Dante Martin and Bushi. So Ashi Road for Bushi over Dante Martin. Huge win, nonetheless. Got the crowd buzzing, too. So uh, finally, a steal the show matchup that actually stole the show. Damn, a 67, thanks to um, Francesco Kira being really off his game. Showed Yumino with a 59 as well. Both guys kind of shit the bed on that one. For the Hankai uh, Death Rider, though, for Shoda Yumino. So, fuck yeah. Busting out the big guns for that. Now, our main event, 78, Kushida. Feeding Daichi Hashimoto with the Supernova Press in 23-57. Huge win, beating the heavyweight champion, junior heavyweight champion, rather, as uh, in... Uh, in a 28-minute match as well. Shaking up Block B tremendously there. Now we'll take a look at the standings. See where we're at. As our last eight shows of the of the tournament. We, uh, we're riding pretty high, though. We've had some uh, some good performances from, from a good bit of guys so far. Hoping for... Um, I'm hoping for something big, though. I'm hoping for a really great, great matchup as Edge is retiring. So is Shane O'Mac. And so, yeah, torn tournaments here. As far as Block A, uh, it's tied with uh, Airbender and Chaz Gable. Of course, we just saw the tiebreaker matchup with Chaz beating Airbender. Uh, then, as far as in second, Drew Gulak, Kawado, and Yehi all with six points. It's Chaz Gable's block to lose at this rate. Um, and then Block Torus has the one win over Chaz Gable. So, if he can kind of get rocking and rolling here, he's got a chance to catch him. But it's a pretty outside chance. Four points also for Demonic Mamba and four points for SB Kento. Then two points for Fuminari Abe and Taiji Shimura. Crazy that Abe at best could finish with ten points. Pretty nuts. For Block B, as far as it is, very, very close. Tight race all the way around. Five people tied for first. With only four matches left for each person. That's pretty crazy. Dante, Kushida. Gavin McGavin now, slash Lee Moriarty, Jason Lee, and Shota Yumano. A lot can still happen, obviously. A lot of matches still left. Dante, he's lost to O'Reilly and Bushi, so those two losses potentially could matter as well. For McGavin, he's lost to Bushi as well, but he's also lost to Jason Lee. Of course, Jason Lee with the tiebreaker win over Gavin McGavin, slash Lee Moriarty. So that's going to help him out a lot, but he's also lost to Kyle O'Reilly. So O'Reilly's got a couple of big wins, but he's also got some tough losses. You know, he's lost to Kushida. He's lost to, uh, as far as, um, to Kushida and Francesco Akira, who has five points. And then he's also lost to Lee Moriarty's, now, you know, Gavin Gavin, actually. So, that's going to be tough. Yumino's lost to Dante Martin and Gavin Gavin. So, those two tiebreakers, I would say probably take him out of the running as far as being able to be the winning person of the block. Hashimoto and Francesco Kira with five points is going to be very interesting because being kind of the odd man out might help them out or they might be on the outside looking in. It's going to be very, very close. It's going to come down to probably the final night with this block. But for Chaz Gable, he's in the driving seat for block A. It's his block to lose for block B. It's really anybody's game. It's anybody's tournament at that rate for block B. As on to day 11, we go. 
Alrighty, day 11. So the next time we'll take a look at the standings is probably day 14. Sounds about right. About, you know, as far as it'll be the home stretch. Going into the final two shows. As uh, with uh, Satoshi Kojima here, passing on microphone work to Iato Tamora. So, of course, Chaz Gable, Ereiro del Airbender, those are the two guys to watch out for. As far as Airbender and Yehai, that's going to be a hell of a matchup. And Airbender's going to beat him. That's, a, that's probably going to be the main, to be honest. Um, Demonic Bomb of Chad Gable, that might be the technical masterclass matchup. Might be the Steel of Show matchup. It's a Steel of Show. Alright, so Chaz Gable also wins. So he's still in the lead here after day 11. Gulak and Kawato might be the masterclass match. It is, and Kawato's going to lose to Drew Gulak. Black Taurus and SB Kento. SB beating Black Taurus. Yeah, he beat him last year. Yeah. Ah, uh, you know, it's against my better judgment, but we're, we're cool with it. And Abe and Ishimori. God damn, Fuman or Abe just getting fucked over here. Both these guys are great. Sucks that someone's got to lose, to be honest, but we're going to give it to um, Abe there in 23 minutes. Let's see, we'll swap this, swap that. Perfect. Opening contest. Uh, Mexa Blood. Riley, Samurai Del Sol against the prehistoric barbarians. Barbaric Avanero and K Man Oog. Is uh, K Man Oog going to lose to uh, Ryu Lee in 10 minutes? Nice little undercard matchup. And, you know, we know Ryu Lee and Samurai Del Sol are a great little team, so it, that should go over pretty well. I'm trying to remember what was day three. Okay, so it was Hokuto. Nice. Nice. It's been a couple of days now that we've had in between, so everything should be. Pretty much good to go uh, from that perspective. But we are in, in June now, so a lot, a lot of happening. A lot, we're at the halfway point of 2026. That is wild to think about. 78, though, here for uh, the Mexa Blood Prehistoric Barbarians matchup. They didn't really have a chance. I mean, Bar Barbaro Cavanaro was close, but it's Ryu Lee, Samurai Del Sol, have a hell of a team. As the Rodilla Dragon from Ryu Lee, you rarely get to see him use that. That's really cool. The so 69 there from uh, Drew Gulak and Kawato. Nice. And uh, yeah, Kawato, not even close to having a good match. Uh, yeah, I mean, this definitely suited Drew Gulak. Well, I didn't realize that you get a bonus if it's a good little matchup. That's fun. You know, all around, I, I would say that went pretty well for that uh, that matchup. But the 77 here for uh, Chaz Gable and Demonic Bomba. He's been tremendous, though. From a debut perspective, he he's been fantastic. I'd say a lot of the guys we've brought in this year have been great. You know, him and Sombra, fuck. I mean, you can't really beat that. You know, those are two heavy hitters as far as in the professional wrestling world. To be able to bring them in, pretty great. SB Kento and uh, Black Taurus have a nice little matchup. Both guys 62s. 69 matchup, nice. As uh, uh, not as SB Shooter for SB Kento in 2146. There's 81 here for Taiji Shibori and Fulman Arabe, figure four leg lock from Abe. Yeah, I mean, he's had a unique best of juniors, losing a lot of matches, but still not over yet. Um, something might terribly happen, you know, to where uh, the block might get flipped upside down. There's still a lot of, a lot of matches left. Another 81 here for uh, Airbender and Yehai is a 630 from Airbender. Fun little matchup as well again. I mean, two great matches there in the main and co-main. We'll take those 81s. Not bad at all. Not a bad night there for night 11. As on to day 12, we go. Alrighty, day 12. No backstage instance, so we can hop right in. As for the main event, Taichi Hashimoto, Kyle O'Reilly. Not a bad little matchup. As a Hashimoto will be beating Kyle O'Reilly. 24 minute matchup. As a first time meeting again. Here is uh, much of the pattern of what we have seen in this Best Super Juniors tournament so far. Man, it would suck. It sucks that that's not Lee Moriarty and Dante Martin, but now it's yeah. You know, but it is what it is. Kushida and Hook, though. As far as uh, this is a fun little match. Hook's gonna beat Kushida. Now that he's back to 100, percent hopefully it's a good little matchup. But yeah, you know, as far as gonna be complaining is um, Kushida, which is no surprise. Shota Yumino gonna beat Jason Lee in the technical masterclass matchup. As Bushi and Francesco Akira, I guess is gonna be the co-main. Bushi's gonna beat him in 22 minutes. God damn. That is pretty crazy. <laughs> um, and then uh, Dante Martin, he's probably going to... He might outperform, outperform him, too, which is going to be pretty hilarious. 
it sucks we're gonna bring this match down to like 18 minutes, because that was gonna be a fun match, but no, it's not Lee Moriarty. The opening contest of Flight Club, which is gonna be Shane Strickland, Christian Gastonova, and Hayato Jr. Fujita against the Young Lion team of Fuminari, Nakanawa, Masaki Fukuzawa, and then Kuma Amaya. As uh, Christian Casanova gonna get the win there in 10 minutes. So we'll see how Kuma does. We've used him a little bit. Uh, we'll see how he does in this uh, trio setting. Again, I believe we are back around, yes, to the <laughs> Nice's Arena. I'm assuming that's not how it's pronounced, but. So let's run this show. 47 for the opener. As a uh, poor way to start off the show, oof. Had a dream for Jeebus off his game. Casanova did well. Him and Shane Strickland did, did pretty well, which is nice. Because, yeah, they're over. Well, they're over in America again. They're just never really over in Japan, which is why their rating is not as great. Because, obviously, I mean, I love Shane Strickland. I would love to. Him, him and Christian Casanova. I love both those guys. Um, they're great. Just can't can't get them up the card, unfortunately. 58 here for the next contest. So, yeah, because the opening sucked. This sucks. Uh, Shota Yumino and Jason Lee, decent little matchup at least. As the uh, Inky Death Rider for Shota Yumino, though, gets the win. 23-43. 62 for Kushida and Hook. God damn, Hook is just... It, it's pain in me how bad he is. <laughs> because again, I just I know he'd be better if this was in America. But just Unfortunately, we can't get him over in Japan enough. Which is weird, because we've been giving him some big wins. Especially throughout these Best Super Juniors. Dante Martin beats Gavin McGavin. Actually, it was a pretty close match. It's Gavin McGavin with a 60-64 for Dante Martin. 450 splash gets the victory, though, for him in 1805. 68 for Bushi and Francesco Kira. Yep, one point difference. Firebird splash from Bushi in 2139. In our main event, 71. Vertical drop brain buster from Daichi Ashimoto over Kyle O'Reilly. Both guys did the same performance-wise. Could have went either way. There, but 69, not not a great showing. Got the show off to a uh, weird start with that opener, but we got it there eventually. Just took a while. All around, you know, that day could have been a little bit better, but we'll, we'll take it. Just glad nobody got hurt. As on to day 13, we go. Alrighty, day 13. As uh, we're kind of almost at the end of this tour. A little over a halfway point. Coming up on uh, basically the last... Two odd uh, matches left for each block. Uh, but as far as this main event, of course, again, but block A, it's down to Chaz Gable and El Hiro del Airbender. So we'll see how SB and Chaz goes as far as Chaz with another win over SB Kinto this time. It's a tactical masterclass matchup, so it's his wheelhouse as well. Then Airbender's going to beat Demonic Bamba in 23 minutes. So both men getting another victory. But as far as uh, Ishimori and Yay hi. Fred Yehai is going to be Taiji Shimori there in 18 minutes. Abe and Drew Gulak, which is definitely going to be the main. Fuminar Abe going to get a much needed victory there. As, uh, yeah, we'll slide that there. And of course, the Steel of the Show matchup will then be Kawato and Black Taurus. You know, making the change. Black Taurus going to beat uh, Kawato. They've never had a match. I think that's a good, that's a good call. Then Evil and Brody Lee against Jonathan Peck and Don Marcotte. As uh, Evil gonna get the win there for the Dark Order team, so a nice night for the Dark Order, getting back-to-back -back victories. So as far as, I guess we could look at Block A. Uh, I guess we could, but then we might as well just wait it out. Not like in a hurry or anything. As uh, yeah, I think we're back to Kyushu here for day thirteen. As uh, three thousand, so we could run. Yeah, we'll just run the Bibu Con. Uh, Bibu B Com Plaza here. Day 13. 59 for the opener. Everything is evil for evil on Don Marcot. Evil now the best guy in the match. That's pretty pretty fun. Chad Gable, though. Chaz Gable, rather, excuse me. With another great amplitude. 75 for the in-ring performance. He's just been rolling. Unreal. He, he beats SB Kinto. As far as in that performance, Black Taurus beats Kawado with the Infernal Suplex in 1222. Uh, performed him. Right guy wins, great change there, and it got the crowd buzzing. Another 72 for Yehai and Ishimori here. Yeah, Taiji Ishimori outperforms Yehai. He's still very, very talented. 
is crazy to see Eric Bender beating Demonic Bumba with a 630 and 2244. Not bad there. 77. 73. Damn, for the main event. Drew Gulak, what happened, man? I guess the bright lights were too bright for him. Yep, inconsistent holding back. Damn. Tough break. That would have been a nice main event. But yeah, nothing. Oh, man, Airbender and Demonic Bomba should have been the main instead. Yeah, no, I could see that. It's a good match, though. Just uh, unfortunate. Unfortunate there. So yeah, that's another day down. On the day 14 we go. We'll take a look at the standings after we run the show. And uh, then we'll just have, as far as four shows left, then we'll be at the finals. We do know for sure. Julia, she's set. Take on Yutami Aishista. That match is set. So that's going to be a lot of fun to see. And uh, hopefully, hopefully it all goes well and uh, we will be able to have her again uh, rather shortly. As they don't want to, LC Mellon doesn't want to sign Atlantis. So that's weird. But yeah, on to day 14. Oh, we go. All right, day 14. We got a backstage incident. We got a couple of them. As Naito passing on psychology to Hiroshi Miyoshi and Kotobushi passing on psychology to Hideo Oka. So as far as our main event, Damn, it sucks that this was going to be the Moriarty Hashimoto card. Tough, tough break. I guess we'll go Kushida and show to Yumino. Oh, never mind. Sacto Mask Class matchup as Kushida. Going to beat Yumino there. In 24 minutes. We're going to give him a little bit more time. O'Reilly and Hook. O'Reilly's going to beat Hook. I'm glad that's the case. Uh, I want to say this happened last year. Yeah. And O'Reilly beat him last year, too. So, two straight victories for Kyle O'Reilly. As far as Kushida and Yumino, I think... I think that's the first time meeting, yes. Yes, it is. Francesco Kira and Dante Martin, that's a fun match. We've done this a couple of times. Um, usually, you know, as far as this 2-1 Francesco Kira, we've had this at the Best Super Juniors, and we've had this at the Road to Wrestle Dynasty show. Keeps on getting better and better, so that's a fun sign. Uh, should be a you know, low 70s match. Dante's going to get the win, too, so they're going to be tied up. Dante's gotten some big wins as Best Super Juniors. That is for sure. Gavin McGavin, Daichi Hashimoto will throw that in here now. As Hashimoto's going to beat him. Really no surprise. Especially with now it being Gavin McGavin. But we'll throw that on uh, that spot. Then Jason Lee and Bushi, so steal the show match. I want to say that it's a chemistry thing. Could be wrong, but Jason Lee's beaten him every time in the past until now. Oh no, Jason Lee's going to beat him again here. Three straight victories for Jason Lee. How about that? We rarely do that. And for the uh, opening contest, it's a women's tag match. Four horsewomen, Ashley Flair and B.B. Crawford, taking on Rena and Himawari Unagi. And so that's a big win. Big, big win for the four horsewomen. To kick off the show. As far as where we're going to run this show, they want us to run Komozawa Gymnasium again. Let's say I think we're back. Yeah, we're at the large hall here for day six. Actually, let's change it up. Where's day seven at? Yeah, we'll run here. And it gets high. Oh, yeah, actually, we're running the walking on the gym for this for this night here for day 14. So 68 for the opener. That's actually pretty good. As um, Hawami uh, Yunagi, best woman on the match, 63. Then Ashley Flair, then Rena, then BB Crawford is the 450 from Miss Crawford. Supernova Press from Kushida over Shota Yumino. Shota Yumino just did not show up for this match. Just great. He was really off his game. 71 from Jason Lee and Bushi. Bushi takes the Hong Kong Tornado in 10-13. Good little match. Ooh, Kyle O'Reilly sprains his ankle. Hook still really bad. That just sucks, man. God damn it. O'Reilly lived with a brain buster, even with a sprained ankle. That sucks, though, having an ankle sprain. Tough. Tough to have to tough that one out. Taichi Hashimoto beats Gavin Gavin with a vertical drop brain buster in 2246. Two straight brain busters. Can't go wrong with that. And then 65 for our main event as Francesco Kira shits the bed. Just a big swing and a miss here for days 13 and 14. Sucks that uh, Francesco Kira didn't, doesn't show up for the big match, but still a good performance from, from Dante, though. And Daichi Hashimoto still being really the man of the block as far as performance-wise. Is, uh, we'll hang on here to see what the standards are looking like after 14 nights of action. We're getting very, very close to the end. Very, very close. Um, you know, I'm hoping for, hoping for a good showing. 
you know, as far as from really, you know, the Chaz Gable um, and uh, Airbender, those two guys being at the end of their block so far has been great to see. And as far as, yeah, they're still obviously the men in charge. Gulak and Yehi are behind them with eight points, so they're still two matches behind. Basically, some miracle's going to have to happen for one of those two men to not win it. And as for Block B, Dante Martin is the head man in charge now with 10 points. He's got uh, Kushida left, and he's got Jason Lee left. So he's got two former junior heavyweight champions and two... F uh, actually, I don't think Jason Lee ever won the best of juniors, uh, but Kushida has. So he's got a former winner and former junior heavyweight champion left in his way. It's going to be interesting to see that. Francesco Kier with five points is pretty disheartening. He's got Gavin McGavin and Jason Lee left, so he could still finish with like nine points. Uh, that'd be nice to see. But yeah, I mean, Kushida, he controls his own destiny. Daichi Hashimoto, he's got Hook, and he's got Shota Yumino left. So he could, put, he could realistically, finish with 13. And that'd be nice. Now, he either might finish just one point behind Dante Martin, or he's going to finish ahead and win his block, and we might have a champion go on to the finals of the Best Series Junior. So that could be a lot of uh, exciting things happening there. Gonna be interesting. Darius Lockhart got hurt. He's got a wrist contusion. So I don't think there's a show this night. Oh, it is. Alright, so day 15, so we'll just keep on rolling. As uh, backstage incidents. It's Corey Oslin. Oh, clicked it too fast. See what he is. Uh, excuse the making a mess backstage, not cleaning it up, knowing everyone else is. Nakamura found out I'm guilty incidents, so they'll clean up and then bite drinks after the show. Naito passing on psychology tips to Hiroshi Miyoshi. Ishii passing on microphone work to Tomoya Tom Ford. Alrighty, so again, Chaz Gable. See if he beats Kawado here. He does not. As uh, Kawado beats Chaz Gable in 20 minutes, too. Pretty shocking. We'll see what Airbender does with SP Kento. He beats SP. So we have a slight change in the lead. Airbender takes the lead. However, though, it's still... If he fucks up here at the end on day 17, he'll give it right back to Chaz Gable. But Chaz, man, tough break. Losing it right at the end there. We have Black Taurus and Abe. As uh, Abe's going to beat Black Taurus. Demonic Bomba, yay high. Steal the show matchup. As Demonic Bomba is going to beat Fred, yay high. They've had a couple of matches. Uh, one was on Strong last year, which Yei won. It was a 60. And then Drew Gulak and Taiji Shimori is the Technical Masterclass matchup. See, Shimori gonna beat Drew Gulak. What a win for Taiji Shimori. So they've had a couple of matches as well. Gulak's won most of them. They've had two Best Super Junior matches. They were 1-1 one one the Best Super Junior. So now, the Trilogy matchup for the Best Super Junior matchups at least. Ishimori gets the win there. Then Tozawa and Takanori Ito against the Young Lions of Shobo Takibo and Akira Miyagi as Tozawa gets the win in 10 minutes. So that has opened up the door for Airbender to come in and potentially steal this Best Super Juniors. That is massive. Massive, massive, massive. As uh, we'll see as far as uh, where we're going to run this show. So let's say I think we can run... Either day 8 or day 6. I think we're going to go with, uh... Yeah, we're going to have to go, probably. Here, as far as the Matsuyama... Uh, City Auditorium, the large hall. It's a 57 for the opener. Tozawa and uh, Takunori Ito. Ito did great, but Tozawa, he's still struggling. Um, Suzuki did good work at ringside. Shobo and Okuya Miyagi with great chemistry. Okuya Miyagi's doing really well for himself, though. Very, very pleased. He almost outperformed Tozawa, and he's a goddamn young lion. It's Ishimori and Gulak. Go uh, 17 minutes here. It's uh, Ishimori with the bone lock in 1740. Not bad there. Another 68. Demonic Bumbo with a 450 over Fred Yehai. That's a nice little performance from him. And a 75 from Abe and Black Taurus. Figure 4 leg lock. Anytime Abe wins, it just seems to go well. Who would have thunk it? One of the best junior heavyweights in the world. Whenever he wins, good things happen. That's the Kawado clutch. Amir Kawado over Chaz Gable. Getting a submission victory, too, over somebody like Chaz Gable. Massive. 78 for our main event. Elito Del Airbender beats SB with the 630 and 2536. 
nice main event, nice co-main event all around. Very, very pleased with how that played out. It's so on to day 16. Oh, you go. Alrighty, day 16. We'll see what's looking like as far as going into the final block, or at least for block B for their final night. And so uh, we have Daichi Hashimoto and Hook, Shoto Yumano O'Reilly, uh, Jason Lee and Dante Martin, Bushi and Kushida. Two men that are very, very much no strangers to each other. And Bushi's going to beat Kushida. How about that? First time that Bushi's beat him in the save. They had the Junior Boy title matchup back last year at the New Beginning. in uh, Or two years ago, rather, excuse me, at the New Beginning show. So that's a huge victory for Bushi there. As far as what's going to be the main, that's going to be interesting. Because Dante, of course... He's going to lose to Jason Lee, and it's a steal the show match, which I like that a lot, because now that opens up for Block B as far as someone to swoop in, as uh, far as with Francesco Kira, Gavin McGavin, oh uh, yeah, Francesco Kira's going to beat Gavin McGavin, Shota Umino, and Kyle O'Reilly, O'Reilly's going to beat Shota Umino, first time meeting there as well, so O'Reilly will be getting the win in 24 minutes. Oh yeah, I actually like the setup here, and then uh, Hook and Daichi Hashimoto... Hook loses, so now Hashimoto has taken the lead for Block B now. So again, crazy how um, just on the going into the final shows, leads have changed. Right now, the Pentadon Finals is uh, at least for right now. It's Airbender versus Daichi Hashimoto. Obviously, a lot can still change, but at least that's as of right now. That is what it's going to be. So this is going to be fun. So. The idea is basically what um, is kind of fun. As you can see, the show's on a Wednesday. So that means Strong is taped and it's happening. What's going to be fun is this is going to play into what was the main event of Strong. The Strong main event was this same matchup besides Nakamura. It was Fujinami and Tanahashi against Konosuke Takeshi and Takuya Nomura. Tanahashi... In Konosuke Takeshita. Takeshita calls him out again. Wants that match. Says, fight me, you old bastard. Uh, he is just... You can tell it's really getting to him now. And it ends up getting a little physical. Nakamura tries to play the peacemaker. And it ends up turning into a tag match here. To start off this show. So it's going to be pretty fun to think of that's how that happens. As far as we go from the strong taping. Into the Road 2 show. You change it up a little bit, but you still have this tag match. As far as, you know, you change out, basically, the, um, the, as far as, you probably, you probably wouldn't do it right after one another. You'd probably take, like, an hour in a mission, maybe a two-hour in a mission, change the, the ropes, change, well, you probably wouldn't change the ropes, I'm assuming it's the same, but change the ropes and the ring skirts, and, the, you know, change the area and whatnot. So, it's a, it's a fun idea, you know, as far as from that regard. And to have an international New Japan, or a uh, yeah, actual Japanese strong taping as well is going to be a lot of fun as well to do. So that's, we're really building that potential Takeshita Tanahashi match for Dominion. It uh, still has not been made official. He still has not accepted that challenge. So we're, uh, we're really slow rolling it. So that's going to be a lot of fun though. But yeah, the, the show is going to be in uh, Chubu. Or, uh, not Chubu, rather, uh, as far as it's going to be at this, uh, Yonaga Conventional, as far, or the Yonaga, rather, Industrial Gym, rather, excuse me. Uh, since we already ran the strong debut here, we're already set, good to go. So let's run it. As far as the 78 in Konosuke, to get, uh, uh, Konosuke to catch the rather, bruises his knee. So that's great. Uh, luckily he's not on the, uh, Best Super Junior Final Shell, so that's nice. At least he can heal up, potentially, but yeah, just, uh, so what happens when we work twice in, in one show? Uh, one night, rather. Oh, they don't click. But again, that happens, you know, when you have to deal with injuries. Plus, or not only have to deal with injuries, uh, bad chemistry as well. Just a tough break for Kyle O'Reilly all the way around. But he gets the win, though, even with all of his hardships. So he beats uh, Umino in 2354. Probably should have cut down the time a little bit, knowing he's working with a sprained ankle. But that's all right. Francesco Akira beats Gab McGann with the Akira Salt. 24 minutes. That was a 66-71. For Dante Martin and Jason Lee, the Sunset Flip Power Bomb, and that has changed completely. Block B and has flipped that upside down. 72 for Hook and Daichi Hashimoto's the Vertical Drop Brainbuster for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. 
in Ibushi and Kushida. Ibushi wins with the Firebird Splash, beating Kushida. He outperformed him, thanks to Kushida being off his game. So the right decision, not the best choice for the main event. Probably should have just stuck with either Tanahashi and Nakamura against the uh, Nakamura and Kanosuke to catch it. Rather just have that be the main, but we went with it. You know, kind of is what it is. Probably shouldn't have had it open up the show, but I just felt like that was the best case scenario for how kind of everything timing-wise worked out. Uh, but yeah, now we just have the final two tour shows left, and of course the finals itself. We'll see if it's going to be, if Chaz is going to be able to make his way back into the finals, or if he's going to be on the outside looking in. Is it going to be an airbender instead? A lot can happen in this, in this final show for both Block A and B. As, uh, yeah, on to uh, day 17 we go. Alrighty, day 17. As uh, we see the farewell for Ishimori as far as the best Super Juniors, Brian Nevada, and Jimmy London. As far as uh, international, uh, fl as uh, we'll call it international flavor town for now. But that's obviously not going to be their name, but it's just very, obviously, what are the odds that we have some, you know, two regions that have uh, cities as their last names to be spit out at us. But uh, Kingston and Kenta, they're going to beat the Young Lions there to kick off the show. What a tough break for Chaz Gable. To make it to the finals, he's got to hope for a loss and to beat Abe. He beats Abe. That's going to be the main. But who, what's it going to be? Is it is Airbender or is it going to be Kawado? It will be Airbender. He's making it to the finals. Tough break, you know? Tough break for Chaz Gable. Airbender with 16 points. He lost to one man. And it was the guy who finished right behind him. Brutal. <laughs> a brutal, brutal way to go about it. As, uh, yeah, just, even though it probably shouldn't be the finals, or shouldn't be the main event, rather, it will be, as far as from that regard. Uh, but for Chaz Gable, we're gonna have, um, I, I think it's gonna be a fun kind of arc for him. Comes in, falls short, but just barely. You know, just lost one, the one loss. Or rather, two losses cost him dearly. As, uh, I think Yehi and Gulak's the technical masterclass match. If I had to take a shot in the dark, it is. is gonna beat Gulak. They've had a couple of matches so far. Gulak's beaten him every time. Uh, so that's a first time win. First, uh, or at least the second best of juniors matchup, rather. Uh, last year was their first encounter. It's a 68 then. Hope it's gonna be a little better this time around. SB and Demonic Bamba. Demonic Bamba beating SB Kento. Uh, SB beat him last year. Or rather, this, uh, this year, the uh, the Road to Wrestling Dutaku, just a couple of uh, months ago. It's pretty wild. Actually, literally a month ago. So that's uh, quite the turnaround for them. But yeah, Demonic Bamba getting the win. This is the opener. And then, uh, as far as Ishimori, Black Taurus. Black Taurus beats Ishimori. Afterwards, you know, Ishimori gets on the mic... Wants to thank everybody for coming out, thank them for the support all the years, and now, you know, this has really uh, proved to be, you know, some of his, his greatest moments has been in, involved in the Best of the Juniors. Feels bad he never won it, or he, well, it feels bad he never won it, and he highlights, you know, winning it as far as, and he's been, what, a junior champion how many times now? Twice. Yeah. So, two-time junior heavyweight champion. Former Best Super Juniors winner. Man who's been to the finals before as well. He made it to the finals. Lost to Hiromu. And that was a great match as well. Um, and just kind of going through everything. But then, Black Tartarus has had enough. <laughs> After he's uh, gotten out in the ring and is you know heading up the ramp, he turns right back around and is hearing all this kind of love fest that's going on for Ishimori. And he beats him down as is Silver. So kind of as Black Tartarus and Silver, they meet on the ramp, and, and it's just kind of like a head nod, and like, yeah, we gotta take care of this fucker, so it's a two-on-one, Drew Parker comes in, makes a save, and uh, we'll give it him a little bit more time, about four minutes for this, and uh, this will basically lead to an undercard tag match on the final show, little storyline there, a little bit of a, you know, it's a it's a hot shot angle, but it's, a, it's at least a story, you know, to at least have something to build for that undercard. Which is nice. You can't go wrong with that. It's always nice when there's a story involved in your undercard. As for the, f uh, I'm not really sure how I want to run this. How where I want to run the show. 
think we're gonna go... Uh, that's tough. Yeah, we'll just run the Nagata City Gymnasium. Here for Chubu. It was a 62 for the opener. Kenta in Kingston beating Jimmy London and Brian Nevada. Yeah, Jimmy London's not great. Brian Nevada's not bad, though. So he gets the, uh, he takes the loss, though. He takes the loss. Takes the blackout Larry from Kingston. 947. 67 for Gulak and Yay High. Yeah, again, I don't know what it is. There's just always some, seems to be something off there, but. Yay High gets the win, though, with Kochi Clutch nonetheless. Ishimori and Black Tarus, the Infernal Suplex over Ishimori in 1802. is a 73 there. In the low angle that we just did. With Ishimori, Black Tarus, and John Silver. Two on one beatdown. Into the safe for Drew Parker and making it two on two. SP Kinto and Demonic Bumba. They were the 450. So 12 23 for Demonic Bumba. Good stuff there. 62. Oof. For Abe and Chaz Gable. Just our luck. This would have been awesome if they had great chemistry or even not even bad chemistry because they, I think, stylistically matched up really well. Unfortunate, but great amplitude for Chaz Gable nonetheless in our main event. El Hiro del Airbender beats Kawado with a 630 and 2538. That would have been huge. Would have been a huge win for Chaz Gable, if, uh, if Kawada would have pulled off that victory, but alas, he does not, and Airbender going to make it to the uh, the finals, at least. He'd be the first, uh, as far as Mexican, uh, wrestler to win the best Super Junior since, yeah, th oh, I think we had Riley win it here in the save. If not, he, he'll be the first one in a long-ass time. I'm pretty sure Riley won it, though, one year. I was thinking he did. If not, God, I can't even remember when the last one would be. Let's just take a trip down memory lane here. Oh, I'm already here. Oh, it was Ray Phoenix. That's right. I was, I was thinking we had one Luchador win it. So yeah, Ray Phoenix, the first Luchador before that. God damn, he was the first one, so he's got the chance to be the second one. That's pretty wild. It's kind of crazy to think that uh, in this decade, only two Japanese native talent have won it. It's kind of funny that it's been... Two Americans, one British, one Mexican, and two Japanese stars. We're all over the world here. But as we'll see, who will be facing him in the finals? Will it be Daichi Ashimoto? Uh, will it be... I'm trying to remember... Yeah, will it be Dante Barna? Will it be Jason Lee? Uh, Daichi Ashimoto, you know, it comes down to, shoot, it comes down to the shooter. Jason Lee's got a, a Francesco Akira left. Dante Martin's got Kushida left. You're gonna be pretty excited. I'm glad we left this like this as far as for this block to be a little counter to what block A was. Block A was pretty much a two-man race all the way. Here it's been a lot of people have had their chance at glory here. We'll see who will be joining the finals as far as uh just it and I, I think it's actually right now. We can just go right into it. Yeah, let's just go right on into it. They have us at Komazao Gymnasium. I don't like that. It is what it is. Bakanokamoto here, as far as was brought for us court. Keeps of being an hour late to pick up a signed travel partner as the judge. Shinsuke Nakamura found him guilty and sends them to pay for travel partner's meals for the next three shows. As for our opening contest, though, Ray Phoenix, Tyler Black, building up to the Pac. Tyler Black tag matchup here as Pac's going to beat Malachi Black in 18 minutes. So we got Kushida and Dante. Dante beats him. All right now, he's done his part. Jason Lee and Francesco Akira. Jason Lee does his part. Z beats Francesco Akira. So now it comes down to Shooter and Daichi Ashimoto. Daichi Ashimoto gets the win. Tough break. Tough, tough break. For the Shooter. Coming up short. So that is our finals. Hashimoto and Airbender. That's going to be fun. As far as uh, from that perspective. Hook and Gavin McGavin. Hook gets the win. I kind of hate that match. <laughs> Just It sucks that that is how I feel about that match, unfortunately. Then O'Reilly and Bushi. Which is another first time meeting. Singles-wise. Again, crazy how that has happened. Uh, but yeah, Ray Phoenix, Tyler Black. We'll go here. Jason Lee and Francesco Kiro go here. Swap that. Alright, yeah, I like that. I think it's going over pretty well. So, um, as far as the actual card... This is what it's looking like. We now know the finals is Airbender versus Daichi Ashimoto. 
So the junior champion making it to the finals. Rarely do we see that. I know, I know Pac, the, or uh, yeah, actually Ray Phoenix the year, he won it. He was the champion. That's when he uh, challenged his brother at Dominion. And, uh, you know, for his Pac and Tyler Black. You know, Pac has had some success at the Best Super Junior Finals. Of course, he's won it before. So maybe some, you know, something in the air, potentially, for this Best Super Junior Finals. If he can beat Tyler Black and become the new U.S. champion. The uh, Utami Hayashista Julia match is set. Suzuki Gun Lij, that six man. Of course, United Empire. They have their tag matchup against themselves, as far as champions versus champions. That's the co-main of uh, Dominion. So uh, Makabe and Gresham on one side, Zack Sabre Jr. and Volter on the other side. Bomb Squad versus Peace Love and War, the eight man tag on the undercard. Now we know why Black Taurus and uh, John Silver, they're taking on Ishimori and Drew Parker. We now know why. And for Dragon's Den and Designers of Perfection, kicking off with an eight-man tag. So that's what the card is looking like. A couple of title matches on the Best Super Junior Finals, which is pretty crazy, to be honest. I mean, usually there's like one besides the finals, but we have a couple here on that show. So that's, that's cool to see, just as far as how, how far we've come. Again, I just I don't know where I want to run this show. If I want to run Kanto or not. It's very... Because uh, we might run Sapporo. Uh, it's, it's weird because, like, we ran uh, Wrestling Dutaku. We ran Kanto both nights. So I feel like we don't need to run Kanto for... The best of the junior finals. So yeah, let's let's just run Komozao Gymnasium. Might as well. Might as well. Talked myself into an 88 though for the opener. Goddamn. And it's Tyler Black and Malachi Black. Losing to Pac and Ray Fenix. Shooting star leg drop. Hard to believe. Two men there on the left uh, have won the best Super juniors before. Crazy. As far as with, Ra uh, with uh, Pac and Ray Fenix. What a win, though, for Pac, though, getting one over Malachi Black and uh, just getting some big momentum before his U.S. title matchup with Tyler Black. Jason Lee, Francesca Akira, Hong Kong Tornado, 20-minute matchup. Uh, you know, Akira did outperform him, but Jason Lee got the win. And uh, he was close to having something big happen. Uh, yeah, these guys, not over enough. McGavin outperformed him, too. Just, uh, you know, the hook experiment, I love hook to death. Just, um... The stats are just not clicking. That's unfortunate. Kyle O'Reilly still on that sprained ankle. Almost out before Bushi because Bushi was really off his game. So just a brutal match here from these two. O'Reilly gets to win the Brain Buster, though, nonetheless. He's gotten two victories off a sprained ankle. Nuts. Kushida and Dante Martin. Dante Martin coming up short on the big show here. Fall short. Just a tough break there all around. And Dante pins uh, Kushida. 25-14 with the 450 splash. 450 splash, rather. Daichi Ashimoto with the vertical draw brain buster over Shota Yumino in 2304. Big win for Daichi Ashimoto, though. Beating uh, Shota Yumino. Beats Shooter. And all around, pretty solid best Super Juniors. You know, it sucks Moriarty got injured because that would have really helped him. And he, he was going to have some big matches along the way. Couldn't happen, unfortunately. But... Boy, do we have a, a pretty big final show, though. That main event of Airbender and Hashimoto, I will say it doesn't have a prayer <laughs> against trying to outperform Tyler Black and Pac. That match is going to rule, and I'm excited to see how that plays out. Also get to see women's title matchup as well, and it's all around. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, yeah, on to the finals we go. Alrighty, we are here at the finals of the Best Super Juniors. At the Q&A Stadium in Miyagi. 49,000 on hand for this show. As the opening contest. The 8-man tag between the, uh, the Dragon's Den team and the Designers of Perfection. As Daniel Garcia submitting Tai Chi with the cattle mutilation. As a fun little win for the uh, Dragon's Den team. Tamora and Sonata being the heavy lifters of the match. No surprise there. A lot of green. A lot of green. But still uh, O'Reilly's injury. Still bringing him down. It's crazy that he still outperformed Sho and Tai Chi with a sprained ankle. 78 for Black Taurus and John Silver against Drew Parker and Taiji Shimori. Ishimori pins Black Taurus with the 
Bloody Dragon. Big win, though, for Taiji Shimori. And again, best guy in the match. And he's the guy that's, you know, no more best Super Juniors for him. So that shows you how great he still is. Bomb Squad versus Peace, Love, and War. It's the 78 here. It's Hiromu Benning, Caveman Oog with the double underhook pile driver. The old Tiger Driver 98, if you will. It's Hiromu with a 93. Juice with an 86. Ryu Lee with a 91. Uh, Samurai Dosso with an 86. Some good ratings there. You know, Roosh with a 78. 74 for Cavanero. Good stuff all the way around. 87 for the United Empire match. As it's uh, Zach Sebastian, Volter, and Josh Alexander against Makabe, Gresham, and the Great Okan. It's Josh Alexander losing to Daniel Makabe. It's Makabe with the Makabe lock. Big win for United Empire there. Uh, either way, you know, they were going to be winners tonight, but uh, the better team gets the win. Really close match, though. Really, really close. I love that match, though. Shows you how strong United Empire are. So they never open weight. Six-man tag team title matchup. Shingo Takagi pinning Claudio Castagnoli and getting the win. As, of course, getting some revenge as well for their match against them earlier on the tour. That uh, tag match. Sashino it's tremendous. Sombra, tremendous. Uh, even Shingo and Bushi were great. It's crazy that Claudio was almost the worst guy in the match. Hell of a match, though, a 92. Gladly, we'll gladly take that. 77 for Julia and Yutami Aishista. The 17th defense for Julia. What's crazy is I think three of those are from us. The rest are from everybody else in the IWGP alliance, which is like... Uh, we got Impact in there, AW's in there, Oz is now in there. Um, I'm trying to think who else. CMLL's in there. Oh, uh, Rev Pro, Ring of Honor. There's so many companies in there. And that's the reason why she's been getting booked so much. That's 17 defenses in the span of six months. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. She's been all over the world. You know, she's defended that belt everywhere. So that's uh, That's been a lot of fun to see. The U.S. title matchup. Tyler Black and Pac. Pac wins with a 450. Your winner. And that's uh, crazy. There was only a 93. Fucking lack of psychology. My ass. We need these guys going all out and having a crazy ass match. That's all right. Our main event. Wow. A 95. Shocking, to be honest. But I think that's because of a great co-main elevated this, to be honest. Plus, uh, pretty good chemistry. Uh, both guys did a good job with the slow build. Uh, Nagata did well. Uh, no bonus for the referee. But the really bad thing was Daichi Hashimoto. The crowd was hot. That was a hell of a fucking show. 93 and a 95. I, I cannot believe that match did better than your title match. Would not have guessed that ever. What a performance. So, uh, fucking Vikingo with an 88 is crazy. Hashimoto gets the win and is the best Super Juniors winner 2026. As, uh, oh, this was supposed to be the last press conference, so we'll do it now. Uh, a, you know, a distraught Tyler Black, but just kind of, as far as not really, it, it seems like the focus is just not there from him, you know. He's got his, running his hands through his hair, and just, you know, as far as he's, he's, he's not even, like, at the table. This is, like, backstage, where he's just, all, you know, laying down, kind of, you know, as far as, just on his, on his butt. Is, uh, he's got his knees up to his chest, just kind of laying down in that position, and you know, he's got his running his hands through his head, and or run run them through his hair, and he's putting his you know, palm of his hands in his hand, and putting his palms up to his face, and it's just like, oh god, like you know, it, it just seems like it's kind of weighing on him. What's going on? It says, you know, listen, Pac, tonight, this wasn't about you. It's about me and Moxley. I can't compete. Always turning, you know, looking over my shoulder, thinking, ah, oh, someone that this crazy fuck is gonna come out of nowhere and attack me. Says he's gonna, you know, ruin any type of match, and it, it's messed his headspace. He feels like, you know, as far as House of Black is at a, a spot where he can't be defended, and that type of, I guess, that type of philosophy and that type of psychology is really throwing him off, and he feels that. um... There's only one way to get rid of it, and he has got a special request for John Moxley. For Dominion, non-sanctioned Tokyo Street Fight. And, and Tyler Black says, this is not just a 
oh, this is going to be you know, a match held in the ring. No, we're going to the streets of Tokyo for this. This is a legit Tokyo street fight. That way I know there's not going to be uh, you know, House of Black Task Force Death Interference. It's me and you in the streets of the people. One man is going to walk away the winner. So I'm sick of this shit, you know, as far as with Tyler Black. We've uh, we went to war for years now. It's got to end. And I'm leaving it all out there. You better be ready at Dominion. Because I know you're not going to take this challenge down. You're not going to run away from this. Your crazy ass wants this as much as I do. So we're going to get it. So Dominion. Unsanctioned Tokyo Street Fight. In the streets of Tokyo, Japan. Right outside the Tokyo Dome, basically where, like, their little, um... There's, like, a little, like, amusement park area. There's, like, a stretch of, like, land that's, like, there. They do, like, a couple of other stuff there, but... Basically, that kind of area of the Tokyo Dome. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. I figured that it's got an actual name. But that kind of area, if you're kind of familiar with that kind of area around the Tokyo Dome. Basically, that, that area in, in um... That match is going to be a lot of fun to talk about. We got a lot of fun spots lined up for it. That's going to be fun. Yeah, Tyler Black, John Moxley in the Tokyo streets. I want to say it's going to be close to kicking off the show. So that's going to be a lot of fun too. Uh, I want to say we might switch it up. We'll probably... Um, I'm not sure to be honest what, what we're going to have as the opener. But right now, that's, you know, penciled in as the opener. But I don't think that's going to be it. It's going to be a, a weird-ass match. That's a shit. Something completely different. Of course, we uh, this was going to be what was going to start this, the post-show press conference. It's off of the actual press conference with the winner, Daichi Ashimoto, as he wins it. And as far as celebrating his victory with, you know, his junior away title with the trophy. And he's just, he's feeling like he's on top of the world. He thanks, uh, you know, as far as the man that has helped him out tremendously since his time here in New Japan. The ace. A man that he's looked up to for well over a decade now. And be able to finally work with him has been a, a dream for him. And that he's known that, you know, with Tanahashi's guidance he can take on the world. And that he, he's uh, just been disgusted at what Takashita has been doing. And that, you know, this man, we all know, you know, we don't have to kiss his ass too much. You know, this is a guy that, you know, this, the, the 50,000 people tonight, the national stadium shows, all that wouldn't be possible without this man. And that I think, it's only right that for Dominion, after I beat Kushida, because Kushida's the only guy that beat him, so that's, you know, as far as during the block, so he's got that title match with Kushida, except for Dominion. Why not see Tanahashi take out Kanosuke Takeshita and be the new IWGP Heavyweight Champion? Tanahashi just is yeah, still laughing it off. He's just like, uh, you know, this, you know, the, talking about the uh, the old man's scared, the old man's running. I got nothing to run from. You know, he can call me an old man, he can try and draw me into a fight. I didn't want this because I didn't want it to be handed to me off of my name. But now he's made it personal. As far as, uh, you know, with Kanosuke to catch them, as far as Tanahashi goes. He wants this match so bad, he wants his, you know, brains bashed in by the A so bad, he's got his wish. You're looking at the next IWGP Everweight Champion, and as far as the uh, retirement tour, we're going for our biggest solo yet, our final solo in the main event of Dominion for the belt. It's big, it's a big main event, and uh, as far as you could say, the past versus the future, maybe even the past versus the present. Either way, you kind of slice it up. Tanahashi and Kanosuke to catch. It's a fun match to have for the heavyweight title. And then we have uh, Julia's press conference. It gets interrupted by Ashley Flair as far as Julia, you know, just talking about how she's defended this belt all over the world and how there's no stopping her. But Ashley Flair just says, oh, "Hold on, just a damn minute." For the past six months, I've been waiting for my title shot. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. The office is trying to throw me in loops as far as, uh, throw me in ho hoops, rather, not loops. is throwing me, throwing me around, is trying to make me jump through hoops to get this title match with you. 
The only time I lost it was a triple threat. I guess it was an elimination match. But you get the gist. A three-way match. Never had the one-on-one -on -one match. Never had the one-on-one -on -one rematch. I'm due one. I'm owed one. I'm taking it. And we're going to see who really is the greatest you know, IWGP Women's Champion. So Ashley Flair. Julia. Set for Dominion. Exciting stuff. You know, for the uh, women's title. Then we have Sonata. And Sonata is uh, just, you know, as far as ecstatic, what he's got. And says, you know, for Dominion. Holds up the Never Hope Boy title. So, well, there's a lot of things we can do, right? I can defend this bell again for the sixth time. And go into the G1 with my eyes on the prize. But you know what? I got a bigger prize. There was a man last year who beat me for the IWGP Heavyweight title, and he's walking around with some gold right now. It's a man we faced off earlier tonight, as far as hanging out tomorrow. I haven't forgotten that Brian Danielson's the man who beat me for this heavyweight title just a mere year ago at Dominion. So I figured, why not have not a champion versus champion matchup? Because no, I'm not putting this on the line, so it looks over like the Neverweight title. I don't need it. Don't need to put it on the line. I beat this man once before for his IWGP Heavyweight title. I'm going to beat him again for his Intercontinental title come Dominion. Avenge my loss from last year. Take out the Dragon's Den once and for all. Once and for all, rather. Then come the G1. I'm going to win that. <laughs> and I'm going to be the Triple Crown. New Japan Pro Wrestling. You're looking at the guy who's going to be the first ever Never Boy Champion, Intercontinental Champion, IWGP Heavyweight Champion in the same calendar year at the same time. I'm holding every belt I can. Wrestle Kingdom, near 2027, this is going to be the crowning achievement for Sonata. It's going to be the crowning achievement that everyone has deemed for me as far as I'd never reached this point. I'm just uh, a guy that had potential that never was capitalized and realized. I won the heavyweight title when no one believed in me last year. I'm going to win the Intercontinental title this year. I'm going to win the G1. I'm going to win the IWGP heavyweight title again. You're looking at the Triple Crown of New Japan Pro Wrestling. So, some big words and some big claims from Sonata as far as wanting to be the Triple Crown of... Uh, of New Japan. I, I like that idea. You know, I, I always loved the um, the old uh, Jimmy Rave, you know, the, uh, the the Crown Prince, you know, of the Embassy, and uh, just kind of that idea of, of someone kind of being something like a, of that kind of royalty in the Triple Crown. That idea of somebody holding Never Boy title, Intercontinental title, Heavyweight title at the same fucking time is pretty crazy. But it's a possibility. Because Sonata, he's holding all the cards, right? He's feeling like he, he's a man that, that can do it all. Even though he would still have another, you know, six months left. Until Russell Kingdom. Uh, it'd be a little shorter than that. It, by the time uh, the G1 ends, it'd be basically five, four months left. But still, he thinks he can do it. You never know. It starts with Tamora, come Dominion. But that is the show. Oh, uh, that was a lot of fun. I cannot believe that Best of the Juniors Finals did better than the U.S. title match, though. Shocking. Shocking. I think the game was just like, listen, we fucked you on that kill, man. Let's just throw you some points there. But, man, we have a Dominion card that is set. Uh, every match has been lined up. It's nine matches. Eight title matches. Of course, we're going to have that non-sanctioned Tokyo Dome. Or Tokyo Dome. Fucking just Tokyo Street Fight. Legit in the streets of Tokyo is where those... Two crazy fucks are going to battle it out. And Tyler Black and John Moxley. I, I, the IWGP Heavyweight title match is finally set. Kanosuke Takeshita, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Got Julia and Ashley Flair for the women's title. Sonata and Tomura for the Intercontinental title. Champions versus Champions. in the co-main tag team title matchup. Both tag belts on the line. United Empire versus United Empire. And Kushida versus... Uh, Daichi Ashimoto for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. A lot happening. A lot happening on that final, or on the final, on that Dominion show. Very, very excited to see it. I uh, I think this Dominion card, top to bottom, 
is one of my favorite cards because it's got a little bit of everything. It's got something for the future, it's got something for the present, it's got something as far as you're talking historical perspective for Tanahashi. He's got a chance at glory one more time. Kanosuke Takeshita can beat the ace, and uh, it's just. I, I just. I love this match. You know, on paper, I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Pac, now the new U.S. champion as well. That kind of feels like it's an oversight right now, just from kind of the way we're talking. But uh, he's he's definitely earned it. He's one of the best performers in the world. And it's his first reign as the U.S. champion, so that's going to be a lot of fun to see how he does. Uh, yeah, I'm just all around very, very pleased with how this has played out. Uh, 2026, I mean, it's been an interesting year. We were dipped down a little bit. Towards kind of the middle-ish part of the year. It, we were trying to figure it out. Because we were shifting a lot of what was happening. As far as basically the last... I'd say a, a, last year and some change. There's been a big change in the heavyweight scene. Heavyweight scene. The main event scene. And uh, it's worked out really well in our favor though finally. And especially... I cannot believe again. How great that Best Super Juniors was. Because that was better than last year's. By far. I don't even think that was a, yeah, it's a 77. Completely torched that. That might be one of the best ones ever, to be honest. Wouldn't be too crazy to see. Yeah, 87. Because there's just, I don't think there was a finals that could come anywhere close to that. And yeah, an 81. So that's wild, uh, to think. Yeah, we've, um, that was, uh, that was the best finals. That's finals ever. How many shows have we done now? I haven't even checked. Oh my god, I'm almost at 1,200. Jesus, Murphy. And, uh, that's a lot of shows. <laughs> a lot of shows in just uh, from 2020 to June of 2026. Crazy times. But, as far as Dominion is in the, uh, in the forefront. It's on the horizon. We're almost there. And, uh, boy, that episode's gonna be crazy. Uh, you're gonna have some big time matches. People fighting in the streets of Tokyo, Japan. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we'll catch you guys there. Take care, everyone.